<laughs> Sorry, Jackson just wrote gay in his notebook. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I can see the screen. <laughs> Everybody sit down! We got a lot of ground to cover, okay? This isn't right, a joke! Right, right this back. is my I job! <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome! Today we are going to be discussing the history of the Dream SMP. Does everybody know the Dream SMP? It's a far-off country. <laughs> it's a far-off country, several miles away. Thousand miles, I think, in that direction. Over there. Okay. That's the way it is. So, um, before we start this lecture, I'm going to include some prior important points that uh, you need to know to understand the lore, and also a point for everyone watching, so uh, we don't get a bunch of comments from people saying, oh, you forgot this, um, and all that stuff. So anyway, some prior important points. Um, number one, in the world of the Dream SMP, age doesn't exist. If you okay, I don't what like do you mean by that? <laughs> no, not in a bad way. I mean, if you try to figure out the canon ages of the characters, you'll just give yourself a migraine. No one knows, no one has thought enough to care, and those who do care try to figure it out and are never seen again. As an example, one time I decided to do a poll where I asked literally a bunch of Dream SMP fans what Tommy's age was, and I got answers ranging from 6 to 30. Tommy is a real person or as a character within the Dream SMP? As a character. Okay. No one knows. Is it, is it Tommy that, in it? That is actually it that brings me that brings me to my next point. Uh so thank you for an easy transition. <gasps> um <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna starve, thank goodness. <laughs> thank you for an easy transition. Uh Another good point to make is that the characters and the content creators are separate beings. They have same name, they have the same name and same appearance, but they are separate beings. This is very important in certain situations as there are some relationships in this in this whole thing that aren't real relationships in real life but are real to the characters and there's also a trans character whose actor is not trans in real life. It's just an important point to make. So that's that's something Man. important to mention. There's also the three canon live system. Now this is extremely important. What? So it's Minecraft. You're gonna die a lot. Uh huh. However, yeah. They put in place a system called the three canon live system. Now this system means that if you just fall off a cliff, that does not count as a canon death. If you die in a real in a real intense moment in the actual server by the hands of another person, now you, sometimes not by the hands of another person, but if they decide that your death is relevant to the story, that is a canon death. You get three canon lives before you die and you're permanently dead and you become a ghost. That's oh. the system. So okay. are ghosts just like users in spectator mode or something? Um, No, we will get to that later. Ghosts are characters in their own right. We'll get to that later. And just to clarify before we move too much further on, mm -hmm. this is a Minecraft server that a group of friends live stream on regularly. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Yes. And this is a story kind of improv partially yeah. written together. How by it them. works how it works is they plan out every story beat. They plan out the the wide story beats. However, uh everything is like improv. There's usually not like they're not reading from a script. They're just basically okay. saying, okay, this is going to happen. Let's improv. Was it to planned to this from point. the beginning or did the plan evolve? No, throughout? we will get to that. You are getting ahead of me. Stop it. Um <laughs> Yeah, stop it. <laughs> oh no, do I get a demand? Hey, no fighting, no fighting in my classroom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sitting back here now. So, two more oh. things. Um, on the rules of the server, there are three things that are completely and totally banned. There are no iron farms, no villager farms, and no access to the end. There is no access to the end oh, of the okay. server. This was initially done to avoid breaking the game's economy entirely. However, it also lended itself to some of the story elements that show up later. So, so quick question, what's that. an iron farm? Is that just like a way to get infinite iron or something? Yeah, yeah, it's where you build right. up a whole thing and you kill iron golems and it gives you... It gives you right. basically unlimited iron. So, final point, and this is more for the comments of this video so that you don't have to sit through hundreds of really stupid comments. You're welcome. Um, this is a summary of the Dream SMP. I cannot be expected. There are 34 people on this server. 
No one can be expected to watch every single streamer, every no single stream, should. ever. That's impossible. It, you can't do it. You would have literally no free time, ever. So, not every little piece of lore is in here. I stuck with the most important ones, but I will admit I have some bias in what is considered to be important lore. This does not mean- Some bias? Yes, some bias. Some bias. So I, I myself, I tend to watch uh, Ranboo, I tend to watch Phil, I tend to watch uh, Tubbo. So people like that are going to get more focus in this overall. That does not mean the other content creators do not create imp important lore. It does not mean they're less important than the ones I'm focusing on. I just don't think I can do their lore justice as I did not watch it and I don't know it as well as other people will. I tried to include a little bit of everyone's lore in this entire thing, but it, I swear to God, if I see a comment that's like, uh, you didn't include Lysandberg, I'm going to I'm gonna throw a fit. <laughs> Question, will there be dream lore? Yes. He's okay. kind of one of the main uh, characters. Question, are we going to talk about that thing where dream might have, but probably didn't cheat in Minecraft? No, that's Manhunt. We don't talk right, about so Manhunt. Alright, so that literally doesn't matter, right? Nope, it doesn't matter. Can you just no delete one, that from my brain? No okay, one cares cool, about Manhunt. You. Here. Alright, so, with those rules out of the way, let's begin. There are five arcs of the dream smp and we are going to start with the first one which is the early dream smp arc and each arc is esri could you calm down please thank you um huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? so and each arc is separated into little eras so we're going to begin with the early dream smp arc and we're going to start with the first era which is labeled as bt otherwise known as before tommy so now on April 24th, 2020, the Dream SMP is created by Dream and George. When it starts, it is not intended to be any sort of lore story. Could you please put your spyglass away in class? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> 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 that. well, that's going to go, yeah, have to go in the no-no drawer. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's, going in, it's going in here with decree. All right. So... The SMP was not created at first with the intention of becoming a story-based creation. It was intended as Dream was very good at manhunts, but he didn't get to play survival very chill very often. So this was meant to be a place where just friends could hang out and play Minecraft. And because of this, almost nothing happens in the first era of the Dream SMP. So I am going to lay out the important stuff. So, first things first, George finds... Beckerson the fish. Let me get him for you. Let's see here. Here we go. This is Beckerson. This is Beckerson the fish. <laughs> I don't know what I thought that would accomplish. Swag. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why? Why was that necessary? Uh, oh, I I know. It's just a fish in class. I got scared. <laughs> okay. did, you just, so, did you just take the spyglass out of there? <laughs> I'm gonna let you starve. Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway. So, George finds Beckerson the fish to begin with. And Dream and George begin building the first base, which is later to be known as the Community House. So, if I'm to get these heads here very quickly. So, now on the server, we have... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we have Dream... And George on the server. This is Dream, and this is George. These are the two on the server. Shortly after this, we have Callahan and Sapnap join the server. And shortly after this, we have Sam and Alyssa. I don't have Alyssa's head, because she does nothing. So we're going to... <laughs> we don't include Alyssa. We love her, but she did nothing for the lore. She stayed for the playing, and then she just kind of left when things got story-wise. So we're not going to be talking about Alyssa, but she was here. Be known that she was here. So, the very first conflict on the server commences where Dream, this guy, kills Alyssa's first dog, and in response, Alyssa nearly kills Beckerson. Is Beckerson dead? He's not. Good for you, Beckerson. So, after the threat to Beckerson, Sapnap puts Beckerson... Hello? In a bucket. All right. S Beckerson is, is the audio cutting bucket. off for anyone else? Oh, no, I paused. I paused. 
for dramatic oh. effect. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and pause for dramatic effect. I just so, couldn't hear anyone. Roland so demerit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Beckerson is put into a bucket, and the top level of the community house is now renovated into a fish tank for Beckerson. Sabnap and George then also go back to the ocean where Beckerson was first found, and they collect several more fish who join Beckerson's fish tank, the most notable of which being Mars. So we have Beckerson the fish, and Mars the fish. Sapnap, Sapnap also gets some pet foxes, this guy right here, gets some pet foxes, and one of them is named Skechers. And the most, the most important pet of all on the server, Dream, tames his first horse. That ho that horse is named Spirit. Remember Spirit. Spirit's gonna come okay. back. Remember Spirit. So, on May 8th, 2020, we have Punk joins the server. So Punk is here now. And Punk builds his first ever lemon tree, which is an oak tree with gold blocks as lemons. This is a tiny version of the oak, of the lemon tree, and it's also going to come back. I'm getting rid of this water. And it's oh, also yeah. coming back into play a bit later. So he builds his first lemon tree, and Sapnap then burns the lemon tree down. Oh. Right. Why? After, just because Man. he's Sapnap. He burns Minecraft. things down. He burns a lot of things down. Speaking of why, Sapnap then goes and kills Dream's horse. So a spirit is now dead. Oh, that, was, that didn't last long at no, all. Sa oh, spirit's gonna come back. Don't you worry. So Sapnap is just a jerk. Yes. <laughs> I mean, is this like done in fun and games, or does everybody? Yes, this is all. Him? This is all fun and games. Also, Sapnap accidentally killed Spirit. He did not intend to, and he builds Spirit. He builds a memorial for Spirit using the leather that Spirit the horse dropped. So he names the leather and he puts it in a, in a memorial system. So, after this, Bad Boy Halo joins the server. We got Bad Boy Halo. And Sapnap begins building a gladiatorial arena. However, shortly after this, Dream decides that he doesn't want it to be a gladiatorial arena, and they turn it into a courthouse instead. Okay. Now, the, now the courthouse becomes um, a bit of a staple in the early lore. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, Sapnap, Callahan is put on trial uh, for being a simp. Uh, Sapnap kills George after George steals his horse, and then Sapnap is put on trial for the murder of George, and, uh, <laughs> George is then put on trial for Sapnap st for stealing his horse, and a bunch of trials happen, they don't really matter. So, after this, Dream begins building the Prime Path. Now, this is a wooden path that goes through the entirety of the server, and it's said that when you walk on it, you get Twitch Primes faster. So... That's the prime path. Everybody loves the prime path. This it sounds ends up extending more to the promo entire. thing than anything. Like he walks across and it's like, all right, guys, it's the prime path. More P Twitch Prime. Let's that go. is exactly what it is. You're correct. I hate this. Good I job. Hate this <laughs> so after this, Ponk builds his first true lemon tree. Now a true lemon tree is one where it's not just an oak tree that he spawned in. It's where he actually like collects oak logs and builds up a huge, impressive looking thing, and it looks really nice. And then Ponk griefs George's base, and in return, George burns down the lemon tree. What the fuck? Oh. So the lemon trees... The, and, the um, real lemon tree? The true lemon tree, right? The yes, nice the true one? lemon tree. And then Ponk okay. builds a second lemon tree, and George attempts to burn it down again, but Ponk covers the tree in water and protects it. So that's the lemon tree stuff. And then on... Esri, can you calm the fuck down back there? You're just jumping around like a crazy person. All right. He's a goat. That's just what he does. All right. So, Esri, what do you have to say you. to yourself? So. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the early SMP arc. That's everybody involved in the early in in the first era, which is before Tommy. On July fourth, twenty twenty, Tommy in it joins the server. <laughs> And everything goes to hell, and we enter... Wait, we this enter... is the same server, right? Yes, this is the same server. Why did you remove everyone else? Because that 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 was everybody who joined in the first era. Oh, okay. They'll be coming so, okay. back. There's 34 so... people. I don't have enough room on these whiteboards to keep everybody up all the time. So, but, but like, they're like they're all there. They don't leave or anything. Yes, they do don't they? leave. They're okay. all still there. Yeah, I'm just breaking them down because I don't have space. Okay. So... We, with Tommy joining the server, we enter the second era, which is known as After Tommy. Uh, Tommy joins the server, and the first thing he does is kill George about 20 times. 
And after, he, and after he does this, this, these are not canon deaths, by the way. I will tell you when they are canon deaths. And after this, Dream banishes Tommy from the server, sending him thousands of blocks away. But Dream... Wait! But we, we, we don't like George. George is the dick who is killing and burning things. No, we don't like the other guy. Something, George was just responding something, kind. Something you're going to learn pretty quick is that everybody on this server has killed and burned things down. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. All right. But so, why is Dream but, justified in banishing Tommy for just killing somebody? Because he asked him to stop and he didn't. Got it. Um, but like, he, but so he's still Tommy, on the server. He's just somewhere a thousand blocks away from society. Yes, he's right? still on the server. So he's just, he's just banished, banished thousands okay. of blocks away. So Tommy decides to keep on killing himself and respawning back in the server <laughs> until Dream says, no, sleep in a bed over there. And then he stops doing that. However, Dream does let him back onto the server um, before long. Now, Tommy builds his new home next to Ponk's new lemon tree, which is now safe. Um, and after this, this went so much smoother in practice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you are okay. All good. All right. Sorry. So, <laughs> after How's everyone doing on food? I'm, I'm doing good. We're I'm standing good. still. I haven't eat, I don't need to eat yet. So, Full Ju hunger, baby. July 7th, we have Tubbo, we have Fundy, we have Puns. These three join the server. Now, after these three join the server, Dream makes a hidden base in the mountain by Tommy's house. And Tommy finds, finds two discs. One is labeled Cat, and one is labeled Melahai. Now, you'll notice that on these two whiteboards here, we have Cat and Melahai, as well as I've placed Tommy's head down. These discs are going to become one of the most valuable items, two of the most valuable items on the server, and they switch hands a lot. So we're going to be keeping track of who's got which disc using these whiteboards for your so the So the, which one's the green one again? And which the one's green the one is Cat, one? and the purple one is Melahai. All right. So we are going to be keeping track of those with these whiteboards. So, so right now Tommy, Tommy has both. Yes, right now Tommy has both discs. They are his discs. Um, then Tommy builds the bench, which you can find a replica of outside. This bench um, becomes important, um, not to the lore necessarily, but it becomes an iconic place where he and Tubbo uh, continuously go to reminisce about events that have happened and talk things over. So, after this, we have Purpled! Purple joins the server. That's not Purple's head, that's Puns again. Purple <laughs> joins the server. He looks almost exactly like Puns. Their names both start with P, and they're both mercenaries. <coughs> it's confusing for everyone. Don't worry about it. And Purple begins building a huge UFO in the sky that becomes one of the most iconic builds on the server. So. Now. I'm going to clear this board off. So. We have, let me see here. After Puns joins the server, Sapnap burns down Punk's second lemon tree. Again. This guy can't okay. keep a lemon tree to save his life. Hello? Yep, yep, we're, we're okay. here. Okay, everybody's still here, cool. So Punk teams up with Alyssa. This is the only time she's in the lore. I'm really sorry I don't have her head. But, um, so, Punk, so Punk and Alyssa team up to kill Sapnap. So, Sapnap gets Tommy on his side, so now it is Sapnap and Tommy versus Ponk in this war. However, they team up and they kill Ponk and Alyssa several times, and now Dream comes in to stop the conflict, but Sapnap and Tommy overpower and kill him, which pisses him off. So he goes, and he steals both cat- oops. I just lost Dream's head. Oh no, okay, there it is. <laughs> Dream has the discs. So he now but he's has like, is, Cat and Melahai. But he's like the owner. He's like the name character, right? So yes. this is like the protagonist. Well, he's also acting he, like the good guy because Tommy sucks so far. Actually, Tommy. he is what? the main... He just killed a guy. Dream is the main antagonist of the server, actually. Oh, because Which will be coming into play later. So Dream now has Cat and Melahai, which are Tommy's prize discs and this begins the disc saga now the disc saga like i said earlier off camera the disc saga there are five arcs of the dream smp the disc saga is present in four of them 
And so this is we have on four more long. lectures, don't we? Or four <laughs> more of these. So we well, yeah, because nothing happened in the first era. Yeah. Well, this is we're still on the early Druid <clears throat> SMP arc. This is still the oh. first arc. Oh. Yes. So Sapnap. Now Tubbo gets involved here. So Sapnap, Tubbo, and Tommy all now team up against Dream in an attempt to get the discs back. So they kill him. And they get the discs back. So Tommy now has both discs again. However, so, he go so Tommy goes and hides the disc in his base. He covers up his screen on stream so that you can't even, so not even the viewers get to know where the discs are and Dream cannot find them. However, Dream is pissed off that, that he was defeated. So he, Tommy, Tommy covered up his screen, but not his sound. So t Dream uses the sound clips to figure out how far Tommy went from his base and finds the discs and takes them both back. Oh my god, big brain. Big brain. It's actually pretty intense and interesting. Um, so Dream, then... So now, we have Dream and Tommy. So Dream offers to give Tommy back the discs in exchange for a netherite chest plate. Now, Tommy disagrees with the offer, offer and he and Tubbo... I'm gonna switch him around. He and Tubbo fight Dream. They fight Dream, and they lose. They die. They lose pretty horribly. Wait, this is a 2v1 fight, and they both lose? Yes. Oh, okay. Dream, Dream is, is cool, an, dude. Dream is one of the best PvPers in all of Minecraft. And none of these are canon fights, right? No, these are all or canon None of these fights. are canon deaths. None of these are canon deaths, you're correct. Okay. I will mention it when there is a canon death. Yeah, I figured as much. All right. So... They lose, and then Dream decides to be a bit of an asshole, and he takes a jukebox and begins playing the music disc right in front of Tommy, <laughs> where he can't get to it. So he starts playing the music disc, and that pisses Tommy off. So he manages to go, and he grabs the disc, and he tosses it down to Tubbo. Now Tubbo grabs the disc and logs out. So for a moment, it seems as though Tommy... Tubbo has Melahai. But when Tubbo logs back on, he finds that he doesn't have it at all, and Dream has it again. <laughs> so, How did he do that? What was this bright, big brain move? Tubbo, Tubbo believed he had picked up the disc and he had not. Oh, uh, why? So he logged out. What do you mean, why? He just thought he had the he disc. He thought he and had it, and it, it, didn't. It, didn't, it wasn't in his inventory. Yeah, pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Wow. No, I, I like thinking the dream was like this Death Note level mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. He somehow no. got it. No. All right. So, Dream, then, showing off his assholitudeness again, starts burning more fake discs in front of Tommy to get a rise out of him, which works. <laughs> Wait, you can make fake discs? No, they're not fake discs. They're, they're more discs. They're just not Tommy's. Oh, okay. There are other so there copies are just of multiple Melahai. copies of this disc yeah. now. It's like that's oh, not should the... I get one? Yeah, that's not like the real disc. It's like a fake. I got copy. it! I got it, guys! <laughs> Put my face on the board now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, every time you punch us, it means we need food sooner, right? Yes, I know. Yeah. All right. But, so... but you, so you better act nice. Uh, yes. So... The essence of chaos. So Tommy agrees, after burning discs, Tommy agrees to do the trade. However, both of them decide to scam each other. Dream drops fake discs in the trade, and Tommy pulls a fake out and grabs the netherite chest plate back before, Tom before Dream can get it. So nobody has what they want now. <laughs> anyway. Except for Dream, who has both the discs. Yes, exactly. Anyway, so over here, Tubbo... So we're going to move move over here for a second. Tubbo, Fundy, and Purpled. Yes, it is Purpled. Build the Socializing Club. Now, the Socializing Club is a building where no violence is allowed, and it's meant to be used in order to solve conflicts in a way that doesn't include a damn sword. Well, what about the courthouse? The courthouse is for trials. This is okay. The Socializing Club is just for talking about stuff. However, yeah, when, like when they're in the middle, when they're in the middle of this conversation, Tommy bursts in and demands Tubbo's help with getting the discs back. So the socializing club disbands. Now Tommy and Tubbo over here, they use a piston glitch to break through the floor and find Dream's secret base. 
So they go back to Dream's base, but they cannot find the disc there, and instead they steal a bunch of his diamonds where they're hoping to scam Dream into taking the diamonds in exchange for the discs. However, Dream will not accept anything less than another netherite chestplate. And they try to negotiate, and they try to negotiate, but it doesn't work. So it... the deal goes through. And Tommy gives up his netherite chestplate in exchange for both discs. So now Tommy has both discs again. However, Tommy quickly realizes that Dream is going to stop at nothing to get these discs back. Because he just is. Um, so Tommy decides he's going to build an ender chest to keep the discs safe, as nobody can access your ender chest except for you. So if he, he gets some resources from... I have so many heads in my inventory right now. Is that legal? Because I know we can't go to the end. No, yeah, it's le it's legal. Ender chests are fine. It's just going okay. to the end. It's like making right, the Right, because you just need an ender pearl, right? Yeah, yeah you don't need Cause, anything. Because the, yeah, idea, just... the idea behind breaking off the end is that, like, cutting off Elytra. Okay. Elytra and shulker boxes was the idea. Because it was initially done to, like, protect the game's economy. And so people weren't flying around all the time. It's super powerful. So, Tommy and Tubbo get some materials from Punz to build the ender chest, and Tommy heads out to Mine Obsidian. However, while Tommy is heading out to Mine Obsidian, Dream catches on to what he's doing and starts chasing him down. Tommy is only able to get seven obsidian, and you need eight to build an ender chest. However, Tubbo then remembers that he has one lone piece of obsidian left at his house, and this is actually a very intense chase scene when you watch it. It's insanity. So Tommy is getting low on stamina. He's going to run out of stamina, and the minute he runs out of stamina, Dream will be able to catch up and kill him and get the disc back. So Tommy runs to the Tubbo's house desperately, trying to get there as fast as he possibly can. Is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? Is he going to make it? He does, and Tubbo throws down the obsidian and pushes Dream back just long enough for Tommy to go build the ender chest, place it, and put the disc inside. Dream kills Tommy literally a millisecond after he places that ender chest down and gets the disc inside. It is a... It is to the wire. Jesus. It's amazing. Pretty cool. And very fun. It's actually really, really interesting. So, this ends the first disc saga conflict. Now I say the first because there's more to come. So... On July 12th, 2020, Wilbur joins the server. We have Wilbur here now. Now, also, Oh, he's a British guy, isn't he? Yes. Now, <laughs> now also during this... Doo -doo -doo, for a moment, Jay Schlatt joins the server. Now, Jay Schlatt um, is in a surprise visit for Tommy, but then he gets banned from the server by Dream because he wasn't supposed to be there. But don't worry, <laughs> he'll he'll be back soon enough. Skeptic? Is there any actual beef between Dream and Tommy with this kind of stuff? No, 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 no. This is okay. This is what I mean when All I character. say char characters and content creators are not the same people. They also have this plastered all over the wiki that the all of the fights in the Dream SMP are purely fictional. Okay. They're all buds. So. Skeppy joins the server, and Eret joins the server. Now, fun quick fact about Eret, so we don't get confused. Eret uses all pronouns, he, she, they, so I'll be switching in between for Eret. Eret's very cool. We love him. All right. Good for that. So, Eret builds... The first thing Eret does is he builds a huge fuck-off castle. Golf castle. Just for fun. <laughs> the huge yeah, fuck-off castle. Tommy builds a sewer system underground. A spider spawner, which becomes the most popular XP farm, is built below Ponza's backyard. Eret turns the floor of the community house to crafting tables. And Ponk moves away from Tommy. <laughs> this is... You'll notice a lot in this scenario, Ponk moves away from Tommy. So you'll notice a lot that um, in this server that there, there are ups and downs. And in the downs, typically what... Typically what happens is, like, there's some downtime, there's no real lore, people are just building things and, like, getting materials, and then, like, a big lore boom will happen and a bunch of shit happens all at once. And then they go back to just chilling and building stuff. So, okay. uh, Ponk moves away from Tommy, and in his <clears throat> place, Tommy builds what he calls the Power Tower, which is this big tower, and then <laughs> Ponk and Puns, as a fun little, uh... Fuck you. 
just decide to build two towers nearby that both reach the height limit, so they're taller than the Tony's yes. Tower. <laughs> and that is the end of the early Dream SMP era. Are there any questions before we move on to the next arc? No, I'm, I'm interested. No. All right, does anyone need food? Uh, I'm, I'm good. good on food. Food check? How do you feel about snitching, teacher? <laughs> yeah, what's your take on snitching? It depends. <laughs> Let's say somebody stole a disc from a um a chest. <gasps> That's not a disc. It's a book. What? <laughs> I need the book. I wonder back. who stole it. Tyler, did you steal it? I lit. <laughs> <laughs> we all literally it saw you walk out. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, why did I get hit? For snitching. <laughs> this you is get elementary school all over again. You get hit three times for actually doing it. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> We're ready for the second arc. All right. I see why people think of Dream as a villain now. I Yes. I get it. He's a bit of an asshole. And it's only going to get worse from here, by the way. <laughs> so... With this, we enter the Lemanberg Independence arc. So, oh, now, now that Wilbur has joined the server, we're going to come over here for a little bit. Wilbur Is has this... rejoined the server, and he this... builds the Kemarvan. It was meant to be Caravan, but who broke the Lemanberg flag? I put an one on me. Okay. I, I didn't break the flag, I just okay. had one on me. Okay, you better show respect to this damn flag, you hear me? I don't... <laughs> okay, I don't know, I, I just had an extra you one, I don't... Flag, you... <laughs> In this house, we kneel for the flag... No, Indeed, wait, it, we, we do! We... I actually have a, I have a legitimate we... real-life copy of the flag hanging behind me, no joke. We salute the flag and kneel for the cross. We do, indeed. We salute the flag of Lemanberg, and we kneel for the cross of Twitch Prime. Anyway... Okay. That'll come up later. So, Wilbur joins the server and builds the Camaravan. Now, this was supposed to read ca camera van, but instead he spelled it like this. <laughs> so, um, this is what it's called. It's called the Camaravan. Um, Car Cam Marvin. Yeah, sometimes Marvin. I accidentally call it the camera van, but no one really cares. Um, so, Camaravan. <laughs> and he recruits Tommy into the operation and decides to establish the Kamar Van as a base of operations for what he intends to become a drug empire. <laughs> yeah. As okay. you do in your everyday Minecraft server. So Tom <laughs> Tommy and Wilbur, they plan to steal all the brewing stands from other members of the server as well as rare potion ingredients and materials to build um to in materials to build potions in order to have a monopoly on the market. So Tommy Once again, Tommy being up. a problem. Yep. Oh yeah, Tommy being a problem is like 90% of this server. So, Tommy and Wilbur team up and go against Sapnap and Tubbo in an attempt to convince them to give them the materials. Now, Tubbo is convinced and he hands over several blaze rods. However, Sapnap is not so convinced. And Wilbur and Tommy, they recognize that the situation can get out of control, and therefore they retreat back to Kamarvan. But Tubbo and Sapnap, now worried about, you know, the safety of the server, go and spy on them. So Wilbur and Tommy call upon Fundy for help. So now Fundy's over here. Fundy for help, and they tell them it's they tell him it's a hot dog van. It's not for <laughs> drugs, it's for hot dogs. <laughs> wow. So Fundy, Fundy joins their side. Now, Sapnap attempts to bring Wilbur and Tommy to the courthouse, and he kills Tommy along the way. Now, this this is a bit concerning for Tubbo, but he's not going to turn things down just yet. So he kills Tommy along the way. And Fundy reveals, yeah, I know this is a drug van, you fucking idiots. That's why I want in. So, <laughs> so Fundy reveals that he knows that it's a drug van, and he still joins. So then Eret joins Sapnap and Tubbo in the fight against the drug van. And Tubbo and Sapnap hide under the windows of the Kamar van, and they get a good view of the inside and see the brewing stands. Uh-oh, spaghetti out. So now, I'm going to move Wilbur's head up here. So now, after this, let me see here. We get two more people into here. Purpled and 
Ponk and Purpled now join this now join the fight and they are on Sapnap's side against the drug van. So Tubbo, Sapnap, and Eret climb onto the roof of the Kamar van and they effectively surround Tommy, Wilbur, and Fundy inside. Now Tommy escapes because he starts digging a hole through the bottom of the feet of the Kamar van and just disappears. While Wilbur and Wilbur helps him to disappear by essentially all right, you can stay in there if you want. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> Are you coming out? Come on. All right, let's get out. <laughs> Thank you. You're not getting food for that. I wasn't expecting food for that. All right. I was right. expecting to get hit for that, honestly. So, to- you want to? Here. No, no, I don't. No, no. <laughs> so, Tommy digs through the bottom of the Kamar van to escape while Wilbur distracts the others by saying, hey, do you want a hot dog? We got hot dogs in here. And the two, <laughs> and they get distracted and Tommy escapes. However, it's very easy once Sapnap and, um, once Sapnap and Purple go inside and see the fucking hole in the bottom of the van, they figure out where <laughs> he went pretty damn fast and they catch, and Sapnap and Purple follow Tommy and catch him. So they catch him and arrest him for possession of unlawful substances. Court house. And, yes, Tubbo, now Tubbo, Ponk, and Eret, who have been left behind while these two went to go get Tommy, they confront Wilbur, and Wilbur logs out. (laughs) So Wilbur's not there anymore. So Tommy is brought to the courthouse for trial, and Tubbo takes Fundy to the courthouse, which leaves Eret behind to wait for Wilbur to log back in. However, when Wilbur logs back in, Eret is gone. And he leaves behind a sign that says, you are safe. Which reveals that Eret has now joined the side of the drug van. And... <sighs> so Wait, Eret so takes... Yes? Question. Yes. So do you have this divided by people who are pro and anti-drug van? Yes. Actually, I'm so gonna... So is Tom... Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it looks like Tommy is on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 this one whiteboard here. Oh, no, no, I'm okay. gonna, okay, here, I'm gonna just put this. All right. Are we gonna do this? All right, so this, this is pro-drug van, this is anti-drug right, yeah, van. The, the, Over cool, here. the cool boys and then the cops. Yeah, so. the cool, that's exactly what's going on here, it's the cool yeah! boys and the cops. So, so Eret takes over from Tubbo as he's still, he's still pretending to be on the side of the cops, but she's not. She's now on the cool boys. So, so Eret takes over leading from, leading Fundy to the courthouse from Tubbo, and Eret leads Fundy away, and they go searching for more potion supplies. However, Sapnap catches on to Eret's betrayal, and he leaves Ponk behind in charge of Tommy, because, reminder, Tommy and Ponk are now standing in the courthouse, and he leaves Ponk behind with Tommy to go chase after Eric and Fundy. Now, Ponk and Tommy begin to bond. And Ponk decides he wants to let Tommy go. But Tommy tells him not to, as it would get Ponk in trouble. And Tommy makes a secret tunnel out of the jail cell to escape through later so that Ponk does not get in trouble. So Ponk is no longer a cop. Ponk is, Ponk is now a cool boy. No. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so Ponk is now also a cool boy. So per- <laughs> it was nice of Tommy not to get him in trouble. Yeah, or is yeah. he an undercover cop? We don't know yet. He's not. Oh. So. Or is he? So, um, Purpled and Sapnap, they catch Eret and Fundy, and they ask Eret to step away from the scene quietly as they don't want to convict him. They're like, you're still our friend. You just kind of fucked up a little bit, so we don't want to, like, throw you in jail. But if you could, like, just step away from this. And they bring Fundy back to the courthouse. Now, Wilbur... Oh god, where can I put Wilbur? Well, Wilbur's over here. So Wilbur comes back, and he remodels the inside of the Kamar van so it looks like a hot dog truck. And and he invites Tubbo to come inside and see that this operation isn't illegal. Look, it's a hot dog truck! It's fine! And Tubbo is convinced and apologizes for the misunderstanding and gives him ten gold. All right. T- T- Tubbo is smart. He really is. It it doesn't seem like it in this early one. He sometimes sometimes he just gets a little bit head empty, no thoughts. And um, <laughs> this is one of those times. So, 
Eret, Fundy, so the second Tubbo leaves, Wilbur starts gathering ingredients for invisibility potions to break Tommy out. Like, the second he leaves, he's like, alright, I've convinced one of the cops that this is a legal operation, so time to do some illegal stuff. So now, <laughs> Eret, Fundy, Purple, and Sapnap all arrive at the courthouse, and Eret and Fundy are put into another jail cell. Now, Purple has caught on. Purple is over here. Purple has caught on to Ponk's betrayal, and he feels as though he can only trust Sapnap. So he joins a separate call to discuss things with Sapnap, and they consider just killing everyone. Like, they're <laughs> like, what if we just killed everyone in this courthouse? Um, Could they? That sounds unlawful. Not yet. So okay. the, tri the official trial still begins, with Tubbo presiding as judge. And um, Purple reveals Ponk's betrayal, and Ponk is put into a jail cell with Tommy. Now, Purple leaves to go find Wilbur, because now they know that Wilbur is online, and they want him present for this trial. And Purple finds Wilbur inside his UFO, stealing potion supplies. And Wilbur, <laughs> and Wilbur says, I'm not going to speak without a lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, are so, there lawyers in the Dream SMP? Yes, Tubbo is one of them. Yeah! His name is Big Law. <laughs> so, Purple, having left to find Wilbur, um, he, so Sapnap and Tubbo are alone with everybody else. So Eret and, Eret and Fundy just decide to dig out of the scale, the, their cell and escape. So Tubbo and Sapnap go chasing after them, thus leaving Tommy and Punk alone. So Tommy fucking leaves. <laughs> They're not very good at realizing that you shouldn't, like, leave people alone with other people if you want your operation to succeed. So, Tommy Well, Tommy's leaves. also very good at convincing his enemies to work for him. He is very charismatic, yes. It's a little bit dangerous. Um, so. So, Tommy's allowed to escape. And Sapnap kills Eret and Fundy. Now, this is, once again, not a canon death. Because this was actually before the canon live system was established. But anyway. Not a canon death. Just tell us that gets established. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. All right. So, purpled. So Sapnap had called. Sap. Colin, Jesus. Sapnap had called for purpled to come help with the Eret and Fundy situation. So purpled leaves Wilbur behind. So now Wilbur is escaping and running through the through the woods with all of his potion ingredients. So purpled. Um, then spots Eret and Fundy escaping in a boat, and he's unaware that they've already technically been caught by Sapnap, and starts chasing okay. after them, instead of Wilbur. So Tommy runs to his base, and is caught by, he's caught by Sapnap and Tubbo, and Sapnap and Tommy duel, and Tommy loses. By the way, while this is happening, Purple is completely losing track of where Fundy and Eret have gone to, so they're lost. Um... And Wilbur claims that he's done nothing wrong yet. And because of this, Tubbo considers this, and he decides to give him some blaze rods. So now Tubbo is a part of the cool boys! <laughs> he's no longer yeah. involved in the cops, he's with the cool boys. So it seems so like now we the have fight, a very big, yeah, this now is Now like the fight a is a 2v6. And yeah. Sapnap... I got a question. Where is Dream in all this? Dream is off... At, he's not where, where, there. Does he own the server? Yeah, he's not there during this. This just kind of happens. Okay. Um, so the fight is now a 2v5. And Sapnap decides, yeah, I'm not going to win this. So Sapnap goes over to the cool boys and says, are your drugs any good? Chaos wins! Well, yeah, in a way. Hang on, we're not done. So these are all the cool boys now. So Purple decides he's tired of this shit. And kills everyone there. What? <laughs> like in an uh, in a seven v one battle? What? Yes. He just decides to kill everyone. How does Purple do this? He's a wizard. And he takes Wait, what them do you mean he's a He takes them all. Oh, by okay. So they didn't even expect him. Yeah, they he didn't just sort of showed him. up in their secret meeting and killed them all. Yeah. So Purple kills everyone, and he's like. I've won! Even though everyone over here is like, wow, we hate you. <laughs> so, he Purple is away. based. Good, good job, Purple. Purple's, <laughs> Purple's a little 
a little, a little based, mostly yeah. cringe. We like no, no, Purple is completely based. He's no, stuck little... with his beliefs. No. He killed seven people. Yeah, purple but... is a badass. I am yeah, but what, what beliefs? He's, that the he's drugs so... are bad, Roland. No, purple is pretty great. great. <laughs> Do you want to know something? Purple is only 17 years old, like in real life. So, after this occurs, Wilbur decides that he's pissed off that all of these Americans got together and t t decided to thwart his plan for a drug empire. So he yeah. gets Tommy, this is Tubbo, Tubbo and Tommy together, and they decide... Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me one second. Viva la revolution! <laughs> oh, hell yeah. We're doing Viva French revolution. revolution We are going to start a revolution! <laughs> So they- I have a torch. So they create La Manta. You can't place objects in adventure mode, Tyler. <laughs> no, I'm sitting down, I'm sitting down, I'm sitting down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need some food. Just so, so you need some food. I got, I got you, bro. Okay, All right. You got food. All right. So they decide Viva la Revolution. And they create- To your left. La Manberg. Now, Le Manberg is intended to be an independent faction within the SMP that surrounds the Camarvan. So they de they decide to begin establishing Le Manberg's borders. And while they do this, they catch the attention of Dream. So Dream is here now. And Dream doesn't like the idea of the revolution. So he tells the three that, you know what? It's okay. You can have Le Manberg. That's fine but you can't be independent from the rest of the SMP. The day you say you're independent from the SMP, we're going to have problems. You can exist so long as you're a part of us. Okay, so the very one next one day, Lemanberg declares independence. <laughs> <laughs> so the very next, next day, Lemanberg declares independence, and Dream immediately declares war between Lemanberg <laughs> and the Dream Civil SMP. Civil war! Civil war! <laughs> Yes, we're going to the Civil War. So, I'm going to place down these two sides. So on the dream, so on the side of the Dream SMP, fighting for the Dream SMP, we have Dream. We have George. That's we it. I thought that was gonna be it. <laughs> no, no, it's not just Dream. We have Dream, George, Sapnap, and Puns. And on the side of Lamanberg, we of course have Wilbur, Tubbo, and Tommy, the three founders. But we also have. Fundy and Eret. Hooray! These are the two sides. Yeah. So we have Dream SMP versus Lemanberg. Now, during this time, it is also revealed that Fundy is Wilbur's son. Wow. Fundy is Wilbur's son in universe. How is that revealed? Um, they just talk about it. So Fundy's That's father. Weird. Wait, wait, it gets weirder. So Fundy's okay. father is Wilbur, and his mother is a salmon. Please. <laughs> this is just said. They just decide, like, like, they just, this, Wilbur literally just looks at him, and he's like, you're my son, and your mother was a salmon. I once fucked a fish, and I had you. And you Tony's like, this is what? Then? Okay. <laughs> Did you tell me what that is? That's cooked salmon, yeah. I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> is that foreshadowing? Yeah. <laughs> just leave. <laughs> so, so, Fundy is the son of Wilbur and a salmon. His mother's name is Sally. Sally the salmon. <laughs> we love Sally in this house. <laughs> oh my god. Now, Wilbur says that all the stuff that people say about Sally being... Because people try to normalize it by saying that Sally was actually secretly a shapeshifter, and that's how it works. But Wilbur says no, but I say fuck you, Wilbur. So anyway. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> fuck the fish, he fucked the fish. He fucked a fish, he really did. And then, apparently, he gave birth to Fundy, so there's Mpreg. There's canonical Mpreg in the Dream SMP universe. Everybody <laughs> yeah! <dancing. laughs> and people are wondering why there's weird fetish out of these people. Yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. We all pretend it doesn't exist until it's thrown in our faces. So, like you just did. Yeah, more. exactly. So, let's escape from this for a second. I have a question. Where's yes. Ark in all this? Is Ponk even involved in this? Ponk is not involved in this. 
All right. Yeah. Okay. So, Bundy is also revealed to be the first natural-born Lemanberg citizen, because Wilbur claims he was born within the walls of Lemanberg, so therefore he's a natural-born citizen. The first and only, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, so... Eret then upgrades Lemanberg's borders by building tall black stone walls, and Tubbo, Tommy, and Eret begin to prepare for war, collecting potion resources and other things. So, something you need to know about Lemanberg is that the land is very small. It is a very small area. There's not a lot of resources. It's a very small zone. So the first act the Dream SMP takes against Lemanberg is they burn down the forest that surrounds Lemanberg, further limiting their resources. They also build large cobblestone walls, as well as functioning TNT cannons, which I've made a replica of over there for fun. There's a, there's a TNT cannon over there if one of you wants to try it. It's not like in the, it's not in the lecture hall. It's outside and it's really far away. So I don't Yo, know check it's this going. out. Where, no, it's not even loaded. It's not. I even, just go, I look at it. You're skipping class to go set off a <laughs> TNT cannon? Wow. I'm not setting, look at that. going low, low. At it. All right. Fine. I thought Let's you said it does. It isn't loaded. It's so... not loaded. Would you like me to set it off? No, I'm good. I just want to see. Okay. okay. So this is how it works, right? Field trip. Yeah. All right. We'll do the field trip. Fine. I'll set this off. I'm I'm off. Some notes. I'll set this off. Just as this is. This is Loser. We're going to field trip, and you're sitting down taking notes. All right. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I mind the. Oh shit. TNT. Yeah! That was so. That was metal as heck, dude. All right, now let's go back to the classroom. All right. Why did you bring Esri? Well, <laughs> you rather Wait, do I get bonus points for staying in class and taking notes? Uh, yes, you get bonus points. <laughs> here. Um, where you where are you? Fish. You get to eat more. You get bonus uh, points. There you, you go. You get to eat more living creatures. You get to eat more of Fundy's mother. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Which is the worst sentence I've ever said in my life, and I will not be repeating it. So I'm writing a novel. As <laughs> so can I read it? The no. Dream SMP then so they build no. the functioning TNT cannons around the Manberg, and they fire uh, a few warning wait, shots at the wall no. while Eric keeps watch. So we Aaron, have a problem. Wait. I need leads. <laughs> oh, is Ezri stuck? Ezri, no, no, Ezri's he, off the he, lead. He, Ow. He's off the he's off the lead. Ezri. Ezri, please go back to the classroom. Ezri. Ezri, Ezri okay. out of here going crazy. I'm off the shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. There's a lead. He's fucking it up. There's a lead for Ezri. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right. No. So. <laughs> All right. So they're building TNT cannons and they fire a few warning shots, which Eric witnesses. And after this, Dream and Sapnap burn down Tubbo's house and Dream delivers his famous surrender speech, a speech that I'm actually going to play for you because I feel like okay. when I just when I just talk about it, it doesn't sound very epic. But you need to hear how intense this got. So here we go. Oh, also I should probably note they um, nicknamed Lemanberg Leman Childberg as a way to mock them. So. Uh, oh. Um, and Wilbur and the rest of Leman Childberg, we are at war. There is no mercy. We have burnt down Tubbo's house. We have planted TNT cannons around your land. We have cobblestone walled the outside, and we have shot one warning shot inside your walls as an explosion. We have no mercy, no mercy for you. Do you understand? We will come, we will burn down your houses, we will kill everything inside your walls, and we will take back the land that is rightfully ours. If you do not surrender, I want to see white flags, white flags outside your base by tomorrow at dawn, or you are dead. Dreams of fucking fascist, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's my next monologue for theater class. You kidding me? I mean, it's so good, man. It's so. Would you believe me if I told you that's not the most epic speech that is given on the server? Um, I would. Oh, so I would exciting. believe you. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to happen. That's that's just. I just wanted to show you guys how intense this shit got. Like this was some real shit. So Tommy and Tubbo are then ambushed by Dream. And he destroys all of the potions that Tubbo had in store for the war. Oh. 
So then Dream, Sapnap, and Puns also go and they blow up Tommy's base, which has been established as the Lamberg Embassy, and decide that apparently that really intense speech wasn't enough as they warn them to surrender one more time. However, they don't. And on August 2nd, 2020, exactly one year ago, the Lamanberg War versus Dream SMP begins. Now, everybody take a moment. I'd like you to salute the flag, please. Salute the flag. One year ago today. This is important. Salute the flag. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually saluting my real life flag. Salute the flag. All right. Do you Thank have the Lamanberg flag in real life? Yes, Mary I do. <laughs> That's kind of cringe, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 I'm fully aware that it's kind of cringe, but I like it. I like the stupid you're thing. You're cringe, but you're free. I'm exactly. I don't believe in cringe culture. Cringe culture is dead. Esri, could you? You. Are, I like that you are cringe, but you are free. I agree. I'm. I'm cringe, and I'm. Give proud it extra points for that. I'm. We're I'm gonna, gonna give him extra points. In. All right. So, the Lamanberg versus Dream SMP war begins with the Battle of the Power Tower. Now, this is Tommy's Power Tower. Tubbo, who was planning on replenishing his lost potions, he gets trapped in a in his distant tr jungle base by the Dream Team. But he realizes... This is called the Dream Team, by the way. So, he realizes that the only way back is either through death or through the Nether Portal, and that the closest Nether Portal back is in the Power Tower. So he shoves as many potions as possible into the Ender Chest, and then he lets the Dream Team kill him, which immediately sends him back to spawn. So Tubbo contacts the other revolutionaries, and he sees an opportunity. So he and T Tommy block up the, en the nether portal in the power tower with an end crystal. So they, and if you don't know, an end crystal in this game causes one of the strongest explosions. So therefore, he plans on hitting them with an explosion the second they all come through, hopefully killing them in one fell swoop. However, the Dream Team escapes the Nether through a secret exit that Tubbo was unaware of. They catch Tommy and Tubbo off guard. Fundy and Eret manage to escape the tower, but Tommy and Tubbo are trapped and killed. And Tommy respawns in the embassy, makes a mad dash for Lemanberg's borders, and the Lemanbergians regroup behind their own borders, and the Dream SMP claims victory over the battle for Power Tower. So the first victory of the war goes to the Dream Team. So now, the Dream SMP... What? What? Who said something? Oh, I said I don't know if we should be booing or yaying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you pick you pick a side and you stick with them. Basically, is what this is what this is this is gonna be. I understand. So. You are wrong. Yeah, I just had a uh, runny nose. Dream Team won the war. Dream no, no, not the war, no. not the war, the first the battle. War. The first battle. The first battle. Wait, the only, they only won the first battle, so we're still in it. We're still yep. in it. <clears throat> all right, all right. So, we're all Team Tommy on this one, right? Like, we're all in agreement. There, <laughs> there's nobody who's a closeted dream supporter. No. <laughs> closeted dream supporter. Get off oh, the stage. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, the dream SP then surrounds the Kamar van, and Wilbur attempts to negotiate. So, no negotiation is reached. But both sides, they agree to meet at the Lemanberg Embassy to continue negotiations in hopes of perhaps stopping the war. Now, Wilbur also declares Tommy the official general of Lemanberg's army. So Tommy is now officially the general of Lemanberg's army, and he names it the 5th Battalion. No one knows what happened to the battalions 1 through 4. Um, they were so unfortunate that they didn't get a chance to exist. But uh, the 5th Battalion, the 5th Battalion is going to do it. So, with this, the Battle of the Embassy begins. So, the Lemanbergians, they head, um, they head to the Embassy for negotiations and are ambushed on the way as the Dream Team begins raining flaming arrows down on them from the Power Tower. So, the arrows set off TNT lay underneath the battlefield, revealing the negotiations to be a trap all along. And the Lemanbergians oh, no. are forced into the Embassy for cover. Now, they attempt to fire back but they are frightened by the attack, obviously, and they attempt to retreat further before Wilbur calls them back to the battlefield. Are these the men with which I am to defend America? Uh, shortly after returning to the surface, I hope someone got that Hamilton reference. Did someone get it? Did someone get it? No. Went over my head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, someone in the comments will get that. All right. So, 
So, shortly after returning to the surface, the Dream Team retreats. They head in the direction of Ponk's Tower, and the Lamanbergians, who have just learned the lesson of how high ground can be an advantage, uh, quickly travel to Ponz's Tower in the hopes of being able to keep the Dream Team from getting an immediate height advantage on them. And the Battle of the Embassy ends in a stalemate. And enters into the Battle of Two Towers. So the Dream Team unexpectedly did not enter Ponk's tower, and because the Lamanbergians immediately ran to Ponz's tower and climbed up it, they have the high ground. So they begin firing arrows down at the Dream Team, and because the tower is so high, the Dream Team cannot physically return fire. It's literally impossible. And therefore, the Dream Team is forced to retreat, and the Lamanbergians claim their first victory of the war. Battle of Two Towers goes to Lamanberg. Woohoo! So yeah. after this, after this, <clears throat> Eret suggests a regroup. He suggests a regroup as he as he reveals that he has been grinding off camera and he has extra supplies and extra weapons that could turn the tide in the war for their favor. <clears throat> so they all regroup in Lamanberg, and Eret leads them into a room called the Final Control Room. Now this is a small obsidian box that is a, a little bit away from. Lamanberg and is each of them has a chest full of supplies and there's right. a button. I'm gonna need more tissues. Oh, sorry. Do you need me to stop for a second? Oh no 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 no, you're fine. Okay, cool. So there's a button in the center of the floor and Tommy goes, "What's this button?" and he presses it and the walls open and the entire Dream SMP team is waiting and Eret says. Down with the revolution, boys. It was never meant to be. No. And Eret reveals oh. herself to be a traitor. Oh shit. Now the Dream Not SMP surprise. The Dream SMP enters the final control room and kills Tubbo, Tommy, Wilbur, and Fundy, taking the first canon lives of the server. So Tommy, Tubbo, Wilbur and Fundy all lose one life in the final uh, control room. And they lose all their remaining weapons in the slaughter, which leaves them virtuous, virtually helpless. Uh, Fuck Eric! Anyways. <laughs> why is Eric on the side of fascism? She is. Alright. <laughs> so. I mean, Dream's pretty cool, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> No, Dream sucks. He's so, a fascist. <laughs> so Wilbur and Dream meet to negotiate now that, you know, the Lamanbergians are basically helpless. However, um, and Wilbur says, you know, I don't think either of us really want to fight. We just want our independence, and I don't think you want to fight either. So why don't we call this off, and you grant us our independence, and we can end this. However, Dream is not satisfied with anything less than surrender. Want blood. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> and he threatens to blow up the entirety of Lamanberg. Now Wilbur believes he's bluffing, and he leads him back to Lamanberg and he stands with the army and he says, Independence or death. If we get no revolution, we want nothing. We would rather die than give in to you and join your SMP. And yes, that is a direct quote. <laughs> So, what does SMP stand for? Uh, survivor multiplayer. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So, Dream places a single TNT block on the ground of Lamanberg, and the Lamanbergians are like, dude, whatever. Okay, that's a single block of TNT. What's it gonna do? Ugh. And then Step they back. were like, and they were probably like a bunch God. of TNT underground, weren't they? It, re it is revealed that Eret's betrayal goes further. Oh, no! The single TNT block sets off a chain reaction as hundreds of TNT blocks are revealed to have been placed underneath Lamanberg, and it goes up in smoke. Yeah. It is completely and oh. totally destroyed, and the remaining Lamanbergians are forced into Tommy's underground bunker to try and regroup. And Wilbur says, we have no choice. We have to surrender. Dream so really a big brain death big brain death note dude. <laughs> light Yagami? Yeah, oh yeah, he pulls off some I feel shit. Like Dream that's can like, take Whoa. on Light Yagami. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to see that death battle. Yeah. <laughs> so Wilbur and Tommy go to negotiate 
with Dream. However, Tommy, as you will learn, has something of a temper. And in the middle of negotiations, he gets set off. And he, dis and he challenges Dream to a one-on-one -on -one duel for Lemanberg's independence. So now it is Dream Ooh. versus Tommy. If... Uh, where's George's head? There it is. Okay. So if Tommy loses, he, Lemanberg loses independence and he gives up Melahai. But if, if, Tommy. Tommy, if Tommy wins, Lemanberg gets his independence and that's pretty much it. So okay. they go to a bridge. They both purposefully put themselves down to one half a heart so that the duel will be fair. It'll be one shot, one kill. They take ten paces. They turn. They fire. Dream's arrow lands first. No. Taking Tommy's second cannon life. And effectively no. sealing Lamanberg's fate. However, Tommy is not one to be easily beaten. And he seeks Dream out. And he says, Dream, I know what you want. And they make a deal. Where in exchange for Lemanberg's independence, Dream gets both discs. So Dream now it's has... It's a small both... price to pay for independence, though. Exactly. So Dream has both discs, and Tommy returns to the Lemanbergians, and they celebrate as Lemanberg yeah. wins the... Well, no... Lemanberg has won their independence. Now, it's important to note that both sides of this war consider it to be a victory, as Wilbur wanted it to be a completely separate faction altogether, but it is now an independent faction within the SMP. So the SMP considers it a victory that they're not totally and completely independent, and the Lemanbergians consider it a vic victory because they are independent from the SMP. It's a little bit confusing, but basically just know that both sides considered it to be a victory. So, Evil played with semantics so that everybody won. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. So, Wilbur names himself the president of Lemanberg. Tommy is declared treasury of state. Tubbo is made secretary of state. And while the Dream Team watches, Wilbur <sighs> writes the decree of independence, which I have here, and I will be reading out loud. Witnessed by Dream, George something something, Sapnap, and puns. And then in parentheses, also Eret. Fuck Eret. <laughs> fuck Eret. The decree... <laughs> can, we, can you just break Eret's head? I feel like <laughs> I, fuck Eret. The decree of independence signed. Can we out. can we X him out? <laughs> can we X him out? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's important to the history. She's important. No, kill him. They're important I to the like, history. Like we we'll get to it. Okay, will it make you feel better if brain. I say Roland, in the you national? You can't just destroy statues of people you don't like in history. Will I? Will it make you no, feel yeah, better? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Yes. Will I make? Will it make you feel better if I say that in the national anthem, the actual line, um, there is, it's set to heaven, it's set to hallelujah, and the actual line is, um, I heard there was a special place where men could go emancipate the brutality and tyranny of their rulers. Well, this place is real. You need and fret with Wilbur, Tommy, Tubbo, fuck Eret. <laughs> That's the actual national anthem. <laughs> so anyway, I will be reading the decree of independence for you. <clears throat> So the Decree of Independence, signed President Wilbur, Tommy in it, Tubbo underscore, and Fundy. As we gaze upon the swaths of redwood trees, the great hills to our south, and the walls that have protected for years, I, as now President Lemanberg, hereby state... <sighs> Yo! <laughs> Second green boy! <laughs> Verbatim? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of freedom. Yes, verbatim. You better believe that is verbatim. <laughs> and therefore... Oh, I accidentally put Dream's head in my right hand. Okay. So, yo, under the gaze of... Yo, hello? I'm sorry. Edward? So, suck it, green boy. And therefore... Lemanberg wins their independence. Hooray! And um, for their involvement, Dream officially crowns Eret the king of the SMP. So Eret is now officially the king. Woo! Good for him. Good for her. All right, so going to be clearing this out. We're still in the Lemanberg independence 
arc. I'm just clearing off the boards for a second. So, now we get some new faces on the SMP. We get Jack Manifold. Jack Me? Manifold joins the stream. Joins the SMP. And Dream attempts to bribe him with, with stream donations in order to get him to join the Dream SMP. However, Jack ultimately decides to stick with his friends and joins Lamanberg. And shortly after Jack, Nikki joins the server. We like Nikki. Her name's Niachu, also known as Nikki. Now, Skeppy, I don't know if y'all remember Skeppy. Skeppy joined the server a while ago. But Skeppy makes a trade with Dream, and he exchanges the leather of Spirit the Horse in exchange oh, for Oh, no. Cat. Oh, so now no. Skeppy has cat. He get the leather of spirit. Um, he stole it from a memorial. It was like a whole thing. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't mention it because what it's not horse? really all that important. Literally, literally beating a dead horse. <laughs> yeah, literally. So now Skeppy has cat and Dream has Malahai. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, Punk builds his third lemon tree. <laughs> Let's go. Congrats. He builds his third lemon tree, and Tubbo <laughs> builds King's Court, which is a courthouse in the sky. I love right. that we're go we have like this very serious like lore regarding like civil wars and shit, and there's this one guy who just keeps making lemon trees. <laughs> Wait, I love Punk, man. He he's so good. Perfect. On August seventeenth, twenty twenty, Quackity officially joins the server, and Quackity is going to get into a heaping help and a trouble. So you keep an eye on him. Oh, oops. I mean, face like that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> face of a killer. <laughs> face, face, of a killer. <laughs> face of a capitalist. But we'll John get to that later. We'll get to that later. The capitalist part. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I eagerly that. wait. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So Tommy builds a holiday home near Lemanberg, and he places his pet cow Henry there. Henry will come into play later. And Tommy accidentally runs Dream over in a minecart. Oh, God. Like, actually, Dream's standing in the middle of a railway, and Tommy yells for him to move out of the way, but Dream doesn't, and then Slash kills when the, when the, oh uh, when the minecart hits him, therefore exploding into a million pieces and dying. <laughs> um, now, Dream asks Tommy and Tubbo to bring back his items as he lost okay. them through his death. And Tommy and Tubbo realize, oh shit, we have leverage now. So Tommy and Tubbo escape with the items, and Tommy attempts to trade Dream's items for his discs. However, Dream refuses this deal, and Tommy eventually trades Dream's items for the leather of Spirit the Horse. So now Tommy has Spirit the Horse. Oh and, Tommy, <laughs> and Tommy, and Tommy, we're just following these items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Welcome to the server. So Tommy, <laughs> then, <laughs> so <laughs> Tommy, however, instead of giving back all of his items, Tommy keeps Dream's prized netherite sword and exchanges it for one of his own as a trick. And Tommy teams up with Sapnap to go kill Dream as he believes one of his discs is on Dream's person. So Sapnap kills Dream, but then turns around and kills Tommy. <laughs> Just oh. for fun. And, Sa and and these aren't canon, right? No, these aren't canon. I'll mention if they're I was going to ask the same thing. I'll mention if they're canon. So, for some reason, Dream's sword is lost. No one can find the sword. That is, until after the battle, Tom Tubbo leads Tommy down to a secret Lemanberg bunker and reveals he has the sword which which means that Lamanberg now has two vital pieces of leverage against dream they have the leather of spirit the horse and they have dreams netherite sword so that's yeah, the railway that's skirmish cool. so see now, what they should do is just hold on to these as leverage for the next time dream decides the war of 1812 them yeah <clears throat> so now and Quackity, not try to extort discs yeah, you would think, but oh well. So Quackity, Dream, and Tommy now all team up in a sign of in a sign of respect for each other and start a new religion dedicated to Twitch Prime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
they build the Church of Prime. And the, they label the surrounding area as the Holy Land, which is a place where a violence of any kind is forbidden. Oh. So, so these three are the founders of the Twitch religion, Twitch Prime religion. This is going to go well. Yeah. Well, actually, it does. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I just think, yeah, religion, it's here. So now Ooh. we're going to talk about Sapnap and Fundy. Sapnap tortures and kills Fundy's pet fox. Uh, which sparks the pet war. So we are now discussing the pet war. He also kills okay. one of Tommy's cows, which angers him. And Tommy burns down Sapnap's house and kidnaps Beckerson and Mars. Now this catches Dream's attention. Because Beckerson and Mars, as I've previously stated, are two of the oldest pets on the entire server. Oh, yeah? And Tommy realizes that he has more leverage against Dream. And he attempts to trade Beckerson for one of his discs. Now, Dream isn't willing to make the deal. And he gets cocky. And he plays Tommy's music disc in front of him. And Tommy swoops in and takes the disc back. However, ten seconds later, he realizes it's a fake. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and Dream kidnaps Henry the Cow. And he tells Tommy no. that in exchange... For all of Lemanberg's leverage, the Leather of Spirit, Beckerson, Mars, as well as Dream Sword, he will give Tommy one disc. So Tommy tries to scam Dream by making a fake Leather of Spirit and hides the real one under the floor. Why? <laughs> however, Tommy, I, I was rooting for you, please. However, <laughs> this does not go well, and a final deal is made where Dream trades the real disc, Tommy's pets, and a couple of bee boxes that Dream has stolen from Tubbo in exchange for Beckerson, Mars, the real spirit, and the netherite sword. So Melahai is now back in Tommy's possession. Yeah! But he's lost everything. But here's the twist. He realizes that the fake disc that he had stolen from Dream was the real one. So he was scammed out of oh all of the God. leverage that Lamanda Wait, how do you tell if you Dream? have a real disc or a fake one? Is there I a don't way of knowing? know. I don't actually know, to be completely honest with you. Tommy was just like, this is a fake! And we're all like, oh, and just, yeah. <laughs> they, okay. I will say, now, now they are labeled. They're labeled now as Tommy's discs, so. <laughs> it's a bit easier to tell when it's a fake, but, That's yeah. Um, so, Nikki was The story can override the reality of what happens on the server. <laughs> so, Nikki was a part of this. And she says she didn't want she doesn't want to give Beckerson and Mars back without an apology. But she receives one. Dream apologizes for Sapnap's actions, and she gives the fish back. Now Fundy is still angry. And he manipulates Nikki into killing Skechers the Fox, who is one of the oldest pets on the server as well. Oh my god. How does he do that? Um, I don't remember, honestly. I don't remember the exact clip. Of how it happened, I just know he tricked her into thinking that the fox was not important. Got it. Along those lines, and had her kill him. So, in retaliation, Sapnap kills Fundy's pet Enderman. Fundy has a pet Enderman named Leonard, and he is killed as revenge for Skechers. And he also steals the diamond block from Fungi's grave and Damn. burns it. Damn. So Dream and Sapnap then immediately relocate their pets to an undisclosed location to protect them, because it is all holds, all gloves are off, all pets are in danger over the course of the pet war. So, Fundy takes out his anger on Punza's pet bee named Venus. Venus this is, is gonna spiral into like a Shakespearean pool of revenge. Yeah, it really is. So in the fight to follow, Tommy and Tubbo, who are on Fundy's side, they steal Punz' netherite armor, and Punz manages to steal a piece of armor from Fundy, which he labeled as drip but brown. <laughs> so these, hmm. these pants are very important to Fundy. So Fundy formally declares the pet war as an official war. And using background info from one of George's streams, Fundy and Nikki discover the secret bunker hiding Dream and Sapnap's pets. 
So Fundy and Nikki take the pets to another secret location to hold them hostage and leave behind only one as a warning. Now this pisses Sapnap off. <laughs> so Sapnap, who is furious, demands that Fundy return his pets, and he threatens to burn Fundy's drip of brown leggings if he does not comply. And his threats become worse because Fundy, in a move of... I don't know why he did this. He tells him, oh, some of the pets died. <coughs> None of them did. I don't know why he tells him this. Is it to piss him off more? Is it to, like, establish some sort of power over him? No one really knows. So, so in exchange for that, Sapnap kills several of Nikki's chickens, holds her fist hostage, and threatens to blow up Fungi's grave. So this immediately sends Fundy running back to Fungi's grave, and Sapnap traps Fundy in a box and forces him to watch as he blows up Fungi's grave. And now oh angry, God. and now angry, Fundy challenges Sapnap to a duel to end the war. A duel. And Sapnap wins the duel, oh and they gosh. both agree to accept the duel as final and move on. And Sapnap returns Nikki's fish as a sign of peace, thus ending the pet war. And that's not a canon death, right? That is not a canon death, no. Tubbo burns down Pong's third tree. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, okay, so, and then Nikki builds the official Lemanberg flag within the walls of Lemanberg. And Ponk builds his fourth lemon tree. You go, man. Persistence Four. is key. <laughs> Persistence is key. <laughs> He's trying so hard. And then, I feel like it's a big mistake to make something that you care about on this server. Yeah, it is. Oh, I forgot to mention that Carl joined the server. <laughs> Carl joined Carl. the server. Carl joined the server during the pet war. And he and Welcome Sapnap to get engaged. Yeah. Why are <laughs> no fighting what? in my classroom? Hey, 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 hey. Teacher, Tyler's passing notes. <laughs> <laughs> look me in the eyes and tell me if it looks like I care. <laughs> it does a little bit. You have very expressive eyes. Okay, thank you. It's so mostly Seth... just your avatar. Are, are you hitting on your Minecraft teacher's avatar? That's not a, Is that like... That's a very objective is that state that of demerit. Is that demerit? <laughs> Tyler, why are you? We, oh no! Can we demerit Roland for that? Yeah, we can demerit Roland. Oh All right. God, what the fuck? All right. Hitting so. on your teacher gets you demerited. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. had so many building materials. <laughs> Anyway. Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway. Ed just stands there. I'm <laughs> anyway. my memoir. Carl and Sapnap get engaged. Get the fuck off of his desk. Bro. Carl and Sapnap are engaged now. Ah! Carl and Sapnap are engaged. And they what? build... They And together with puns, they build a huge I replica get. of the Eiffel Tower to serve as a honeymoon spot. Yeah, that happens. Okay. Nobody cares about it. Um, That's cute. Yeah, it's sweet. It's it's actually very nice. So, over in Lemanberg, Wilbur makes plans to actually run for president. Now, if you'll remember, he labeled himself president. So, he decides to actually run for president with Tommy as his running mate. However, nice. they plan to keep the election secret so that no one else may join in the election and giving the citizens of Lemanberg no other voting options, therefore consolidating power. Wasn't the whole point of America to fight fascism? You would think. Anyway, <coughs> unfortunately for them, Quackity discovers their plan, and he decides to enter the election before Wilbur can close the ballot. So over here, Wilbur and Tommy name their party Pog 2020, all right. And Quackity's oh party is named Swag 2020. So. Whoa. And Quackity. You can tell who their target audience is. Yeah, really. <laughs> and Quackity officially names George as his official running mate. So both. Well, parties... I'm voting for Quackity and George. <laughs> so both parties agree to hold an official presidential bait in the king's courthouse. And during the bait, 
Swag 2020 argues to tear down the Le Mans brick walls and allow everyone in and vote and wants to instill a policy of respect for other citizens to avoid conflicts like the pet war. Meanwhile, POG 2020 argues to keep the walls up as a symbol of protection for their people and establishes a police force to stop those willing to harm pets. <laughs> so you have cops and the cool boys once more. Oh my god. The cops and the cool <laughs> boys cool. again. So, after the initial debate, a recess is held and a vice presidential debate ensues. Now this debate quickly spirals into a series of character attacks. <laughs> and, um, this leads. You mean to... like a real debate? Yeah, like a real. Yeah. Debate. And um, <laughs> and this leads to a second and a third recess, in both of which Wilbur tells Tommy Tommy to chill the fuck out. <laughs> and based on this being 2020, I'm assuming this is coinciding with the actual. Yes. Debates. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So as the debate continues, Wilbur ignores his own his own advice to Tommy to calm down. And he accuses the judge who, by the way, is Carl. Carl is the judge. I'm putting it over here of being biased towards swag 2020 by asking him kinder questions. And Wilbur logs out as he claims the court is a joke. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the second time. Yes. <laughs> swag 2020's closing statements revolve around the necessity of server unity and establishing peace. However, before Tommy can give his closing statement, Dream pops in and assassinates him. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. my god. So the debate The is court left. of law, everybody. <laughs> so the debate is left with no clear winner. And that's how the debate goes. <laughs> now well, clearly That doesn't immediately that doesn't immediately like discredit somebody the fact that somebody <laughs> killed someone? No. It doesn't. Oh so, man. And it's now, not a canon death, right? That is not a canon death, no. Right. So Quackity and well, Wilbur. Tommy after... only has one can death left. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Tommy. So Tommy... next time he dies, he's gone for good. Yes. So Aww. Quackity and Wilbur. Bye, Tommy. Quackity and Wilbur then meet up to um, discuss things. Now it's important to note that this did not happen. I'm putting this here because it's chronological in the timeline. However, this was not revealed until much, much later. Like we got, the... we found out that this interaction happened in a series of episodes that uh, Quackity makes later. But I'm putting this here because this is when it happened chronologically in the timeline. So Quackity and Wilbur meet up. And Wilbur tells Quackity that he isn't cut out for a position of power because Quackity still believes in fair systems. <laughs> um, Wilbur says that power... Ah, uh, his one downfall. Wilbur says that power is not won through the fair systems, but rather it is won through swords, through arms, <sighs> and through victory. And he tells Quackity... And through Twitch Prime subscriptions. <laughs> and through Twitch Prime subscriptions. So Quackity... And he tells Quackity that he will not be ready for power until he understands this. So, Tommy, now, attempts to get... God, keeping these heads organized in my inventory is a nightmare. Tommy now attempts to get Sapnap to join POG 2020, to get, them to, si to get him to side with them and vote for them. And Sapnap says, sure, I'll do that. As long as... You denounce Fundy and, for everything he did during the pet war. So Tommy does this, and this pisses F Fundy off. And Fundy teams up with Nikki to create their own party called Coconut 2020. However, the two of them decide to keep this a secret so from a, Wilbur. So this is Coconut 2020. So there's a third party now. There's a third party named Coconut 2020. Uh, so, here we go. Tom All of these groups, honestly. Yep. So Tommy, Wilbur, and Quackity, uh, in a show of respect for each other, they all come together to build the official Lemanberg White House that the winner of the uh, event will move into. Okay. And then POG 2020 and SWAG 2020 give speeches to the citizens of Lemanberg and the Dream SMP. So during the rally, Fundy and Nikki come forward. I placed those in the wrong order. Fundy and Nikki come forward. And it, I wasn't holding down a button just then. Huh? Never mind. So Fundy and Nikki announced Coconut 2020 as a valid entry in the race, much to the annoyance of Wilbur. And Wilbur says, all right, that's fine. And Fundy gives a convincing speech. And then Wilbur says, you can be a party, but where's your official endorsement? They both log off in a panic because they don't have any endorsements. <laughs> 
So, Swag 2020, consisting of Quackity and George, bring forth KSI as their endorsement. <laughs> what? <laughs> but cannot officially prove that he has endorsed them. <laughs> Pog 2020 brings forth, let me see, I have him in here somewhere. Yes. Pog 2020 brings forth Vicstar as their first endorsement, which is a valid endorsement with a video. And then they whitelist Jschlat back into the server one time as their other endorsement. However... (laughs) I have no idea who these people are. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Vic Star and Jay Schlatt are going to come back later. But um, I just I have a that feeling I... that we're going to recognize the names that are like most relevant. I, I do just love that these guys were like, KSI endorsed us, and they were like, Source, and they're like, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, while on the stand, Jay Schlatt betrays Pog 2020 and announces his own campaign. Slat 2020. Oh my god. Now, this panics Wilbur. So Wilbur, Wilbur, in an attempt to secure the win, tries to make a deal with Quackity. And he says, we can combine our party votes and secure the win. However, Wilbur states that if Pog 2020 wins altogether, the deal is off and Quackity will not be involved in the victory. And this pisses Quackity off. So Quackity, instead... Goes to Schlatt and says, would you like to pool our votes? So our votes will be counted together and will be counted as a single party. And Quackity is promised a spot in Schlatt's cabinet if they win. So now, so now we have four parties. We have Schlatt 2020, (laughs) we have Swag 2020, we have Pog 2020, and we have Coconut 2020. Yeah. So oh, yeah. these three parties up there, these fucking names. Mm-hmm. So, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's like Schlatt, Swag, Pog, and Coconut. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Schlatt and Swag are together in a coalition. So that also oh, count as okay. Party. <laughs> Got it. Um, Quackity uh, then goes through. <laughs> Quackity goes through. Um. Let me see. Where are the heads of the people that he does this with? Uh, Where are my heads? He goes through three consecutive marriages that all (laughs) fail. One to Carl, one to Eret, no, and one to Schlatt. (laughs) None of these go well. And Fundy Bill is it Schlatt his running mate? Yes. Ooh, messy. So Fundy wins. Uh, Fundy then builds a better looking White House next to one of the watchtowers. So, while this is happening, we have H Bomb! H Bomb joins the server. H Bomb! H Bomb! Wait, which one? Is, is that him in the corner? Yeah, H Bomb. Why is he here? Did you Who's know H-bomb? that? H Bomb! H Bomber guy! He's yeah, the guy! He's here! He's in the Dream SMP, man. Why? <laughs> He's just here. Okay. I don't know how to tell you this. He's here. Anyway. I'm going to just stare at No! <laughs> Fine. Would you like... Here. I want his head. There Thank you. you. <laughs> anyway. So, the election results are announced. Now, initially, Coconut 2020 appears to have a hefty amount of votes. But then it is revealed that Fundy engaged in severe voter fraud, and the party oh, no. only, uh, the party only received nine percent of all votes. Now Schlatt 2020 received sixteen percent of the vote. Swag 2020 received thirty percent of the vote, and Pog 2020 received forty-five percent of the vote. How did and to- and police get 45%? And Tommy, ce- and Tommy celebrates for a brief moment until Wilbur reveals that because of the coalition, Schlatt and Quackity's combined party has received 46% of the vote. And Schlatt 2020 wins the election. Yeah. 
I would also like to point out this wasn't like a fake. This wasn't like a fake thing. They actually put out like a Google Doc, like a Google Doc, <laughs> and had fans vote. Like they did not plan this. <laughs> like this is legitimately the result. And with Schlatt 2020 winning the election, we exit the Lemanberg Independence Arc and enter the third arc, which is the Manberg Rebellion Arc. Dang. No. So, Schlatt is officially made president of Lemanberg, and he gives his first presidential speech. And in his first act as president, Schlatt... Ah, shit. Where's Wilbur's head? There it is. <laughs> Schlatt revokes the citizenship of Wilbur and Tommy and orders for them to be executed. Oh. So Wilbur and Tommy run for their lives, and they escape through, se- through Tubbo's secret underground bunker, and however, Wilbur is shot by puns. Therefore, Wilbur has lost his second canon life and is now also on one life remaining. So these two both only yeah. have one life remaining. And Schlatt, meanwhile, enlists, <coughs> he enlists Tubbo, Quackity, uh, and George as his cabinet. So this is now the cabinet of Schlatt's administration. And Schlatt orders Tubbo to find Tommy and Wilbur, and, Tom- and Tubbo searches, but cannot find them. So Schlatt holds his second presidential speech, and he decrees that the Lemanberg walls be taken down. Now, over here, with these guys, Eret shows up, and he offers to help the two, but they fear a second betrayal, and they turn her down. So Tubbo, Jack, Fundy... I need to get some heads in here. Uh, da-da-da. Da-da-da. So, Tubbo, Jack, I'll put these down here because of Jack, Eret, and Puns. All the, begin- and just George? I'm looking at my notes. Okay, no. These guys all take down the Lemanberg walls. Okay. So while this is happening, Tommy and Wilbur build a hole in the side of a mountain as a temporary base, and then the two of them sneak back to Lemanberg to watch the walls being torn down, and Wilbur mourns the loss of his country. Now, off of the server, but still considered canon, Technoblade tweets to Wilbur and Tommy and offers (coughs) them to help. (laughs) Offers them help. Okay. Now, Wilbur is initially hesitant, but Tommy convinces him to accept, and Technoblade officially joins the Dream SMP on September 22nd. And Schlatt makes his third presidential speech, in which he officially renames Lemanberg to just Manberg. So now Lemanberg is Manberg. Is this a controversial decision? Yes, because the reason it was called Lemanberg is because they were initially going to call it Manberg, but then Wilbur said it needed to sound more European, so they put U in front of it. So it was Lemanberg. So now that Schlatt is in charge, he's removing the European history. <laughs> I like how H Bomb's head is just now sitting. <laughs> yeah, he's part of the audience now. <laughs> All right. H Bomb. Okay. So. You're doing good. Over here. Been eating your vegetables. He looks a little decapitated. He does. I hope he's alright. Does All right. goat want to eat it? Just a little bit. So, Techno, Wilbur, and Tommy convince Tubbo to act as their double agent. So, now oh, Tubbo no. is a double agent for them. And Quackity and Schlatt, they argue over power dynamics. Because Quackity feels as though Schlatt does not respect him. And many call for Quackity to overthrow Schlatt and claim power as the sole president, as he did get more of the vote overall. However, Schlatt and Quackity agree to a joint power dynamic, but the tensions between the two remain high. Now... Axes, at this point? Yes. (laughs) That's weird. (laughs) Yeah. This is weird. So now... (laughs) What part of the Dream SMP made you think this was going to be normal? I mean, it's like a bunch of people playing Minecraft. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> All right. So, literally what I thought going into <laughs> So, Nikki, <laughs> Nikki refuses to comply with this new government, and she speaks out against Schlatt. 
as she believes that he is becoming a dictator because he literally declared himself the emperor of Lamanberg okay. in his first presidential speech. So Schlatt raises her taxes. <laughs> that's how. Okay. And that's how that. <laughs> like a true dictator. Yes. Now Schlatt goes to sleep, and it is revealed that he has persistent heart problems and is placed on life support. <laughs> oh no. So now, due to his life support situation, pressure is increased on Quackity to overthrow Schlatt. However, he does not, and Schlatt recovers. Now over here, Tommy, Wilbur, and Techno officially establish their base, and they call it Pogtopia. I want to point out that the last thing Dream did with all this is assassinate a guy, <laughs> and he's just been gone since. Yeah. And this is supposed to be his server. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I also like the part, I like that he's, he a, he's just the god that there. created the universe and then kind of Oh, no, he's not. Shit. We'll, get, we'll get to the god. We'll get to the god. Don't you worry. Oh, we'll god. get to the god. Oh, there's a god? There's a god. Um, I, I there is a god, is there? There is a god. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, get to Okay, him. are you saying are you saying this in context of this, or are you trying to convert me to Christianity no, again? No, in, in the Dream SMP, there's a god. <laughs> I meant in, in terms of Tyler's comment. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Dream created the Minecraft the server and was like, hey guys, you want to see something cool? <laughs> Alright, back to the luck here. Anyway, Tommy, Wilbur, and Techno, they officially established their base as Pogtopia. Now, after okay. this, Fundy, uh, that's not Fundy, Fundy and Eret, they, they speak, and Fundy asks Eret about their political opinion on the current administration, and Eret says, they don't like it. They don't like the dictatorship, and they feel as though it is disrespectful to Lamanberg's history. So, Fundy reveals his plan to get close to Schlatt and take down the government from the inside. So, Fundy is a spy. Okay. So, okay. so Fundy then claims he wants to destroy the original Lamanberg flag. And this... What? This upsets Nikki. So, was it, wasn't Fundy a part of the Lamanberg revolution? Yes, he was. But he's trying he to was on the Lamanberg side. Yes, he was. But now it's betrayed everything it stood for. Oh, that's right. No, he's, he's ruined he's, it all. He's trying. He's trying to get on Jay Schlatt's good side to prove himself. Oh wait, Jay Schlatt is anti Manberg as well. No, Jay Schlatt is for Man. He's against La Manberg. They're trying. He's to against La Manberg. <laughs> the makes the difference. He's trying to it convert does. it to Americanism, and we got to stop him. Exactly. He's trying to erase La Manberg's yeah. history to replace it with his own. Trying to Britwash, not not Britwash. Britwash. Trying to Brit wash. White, you white mean American wash? wash? American wash. Merca wash. Yeah, sure. Hey. All right. So Fundy, Fundy. Even though Eret does try to stop him, Fundy burns down the Lamanberg flag. It is destroyed. So now Nikki goes to Quackity, and she says she tries to convince her him to help her overthrow Schlatt. And he seems tempted to help her, but he doesn't agree. And he only agrees to keep the rebellion in this, as a secret. However, Nikki accidentally kills Quackity, and this pisses him off, and he tells Schlatt everything. So now Nikki <laughs> is cornered, and she is put on trial. And oh. Quackity feels a bit bad about this, because it was a spur-of-the-moment thing, and he doesn't believe that Nikki deserves to be put on trial and potentially harmed. So he breaks the bars of the prison and frees her. And Eret steps in and says, oh no, Quackity was never around the prison. Therefore protecting <coughs> Quackity from Schlatt's potential wrath. Because Schlatt's an asshole. Schlatt's the worst. Okay. So, Wilbur and Techno invite Tubbo to come help them automate farms in Pogtopia, and Tubbo joins. However, he's beginning to get a little bit on... Jay Schlatt's getting a little suspicious. Because Tubbo keeps disappearing. And he never says where he goes to. So Schlatt starts asking, you know, where have you where have you been? You disappeared. Where did you go? And so Tubbo starts making up a bunch of different excuses for his time spent in Pogtopia. My favorite one is, I told him I was pregnant. That's my oh, favorite yeah. excuse. Um, <laughs> and Schlatt begins threatening Nikki with further taxes. Uh, as she has shown herself to be against the administration. And Wilbur decides that he's going to go after her to bring her back and bring her to Pogtopia for safekeeping. So he tells her to lay low 
for the moment. However, upon entering Manberg, Wilbur sees Fundy rebuilding the, Man the Le Manberg flag into the Manberg flag. And infuriated, he orders Techno to shoot him down. Now Techno fires, but he misses, and that alerts Slat, and Wilbur and Techno retreat back to Pogtopia before being discovered. Okay? Are you all with me? I'm starting to get a headache. Um, no, yeah. Pogtopia <laughs> is where everyone on the right one is living at, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Tubbo's not living there. Tubbo is a spy. I should put him back over here. Um, Tubbo's not living there. But Tubbo is working with them, but he's living in... Yes. Ah, why can't I remember the town's name? Manberg. 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 And not to be confused with Le Manberg, yes. where I think you mentioned Sandberg earlier. Uh, we're not going to talk about Le Sandberg, because the canonicity of Le Sandberg is questionable at best, and I don't want to talk about Le Sandberg. All right. No, we're not going to talk about Le Sandberg. It's your lecture. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I just ate... I shouldn't have eaten something. <laughs> I just ate I kind of. How is everybody doing on food? Uh, I'm a little on the dying side. If oh, I could get some food, that would be really right, cool. Um, who said that? I don't know if Roland deserves I'm a little. Food. I'm a little right? bit on the dying side. <laughs> I see. thank you. I literally still have full hunger. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, because y'all been standing still. You guys are boring. <laughs> I'm taking notes. What are you doing? I'm having fun in class. Wow. That's what you're <laughs> Ed is like participating in the class notes? the way he's supposed to. <laughs> All right. Wait, what do you mean supposed to? This is, uh, this, this is, is for being our benefit. Are you trying to say you're not being, you haven't been being borderline? We're getting our like, degrees disruptive right this whole time. I couldn't, I couldn't hear one person talking over Shut the up. other person. Okay, let's get back to the lecture. <laughs> All right. So, Tommy logs online, and he finds the new Manberg flag. flag. Whoa. That was a really bad slip of the tongue. <laughs> let's not talk about that. Can we cut that out? Can we cut that out? I didn't even hear what you said, so probably. Okay, good, good. To Tommy finds the new, Manberg, the new Manberg flag. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna go. No, <laughs> I didn't know you play League. <laughs> it's okay, uh, Beck. You have I, to pass. Yeah, I'm. I'm gay. I can say that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um, and he aggressively threatens to burn it down. And now his threats make for a good distraction, and they allow Wilbur and Techno to properly escape. Okay. Um, Nikki and Eret team up to begin um, conspiring about what to do to help the Pogtopians, as both of them wish to help them and do not agree with Mr. Slash's government over here. Um, and then Technoblade receives supplies from Fundy, from name we haven't heard in a while, Bad Boy Halo, and, hey. most, and most surprisingly of all, Dream. <laughs> <laughs> I see Dream in your hands. <laughs> so Dream writes a note to Technoblade and says that he's worried about breaking the peace treaty between Manberg oh, and the Greater Dream SMP. I can see it behind the thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't go. even notice you placed it. Thank there you. There you go. Um, so Dream is worried about breaking the peace treaty between Manberg and the Greater Dream SMP, and he says that while he wants to help, he can only currently help them from the shadows. <laughs> so, so that's actually verbatim what's in the note um so nice. so ant frost ant frost joins the server hooray we've got ant frost he's cool we like ant frost in this house so funny because he wants to hang out with y'all god damn it don't oh, I'm gonna go do my breaks. Bye. Hey, Michaela. Hello, Michaela. Bye, Michaela. Bye, Michaela. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, no cell right, phones. Let's... No cell phones in class. <laughs> He's not on his. Okay. I know. It was a joke. Like someone else was talking who wasn't in the classroom. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Fundy rebuilds the new Manberg flag out of obsidian, so he makes it impossible for it to be burnt down. Uh, Quackity and Schlatt go on a date. Well, almost impossible. Quackity and Schlatt go on a date. 
in the socializing club, which um, he converts into a restaurant. They're trying. They're making it work. I'm sort of. They're sort of making it work. Anyway, over here, um, Technoblade begins breeding horses, and he's searching for the perfect horse with maxed out stats, which I don't even think is possible in Minecraft, but like, you go. You do what you do. Man, you do. You got it. And Tommy relocates his pet cow, Henry, to his holiday home that he's, that sits close to the Eiffel Tower. Alright, so Tommy and Techno also build the Intimidation Tower, which is a huge cobblestone tower that sits by Pogtopia, quote, for intimidation purposes. I think this is kind of stupid since Pogtopia is supposed to be a secret base, but it's not my server, so they can do whatever they want. So I take it then that it's not secret at all? No, not anymore. They built a huge cobblestone tower in front of it. Okay. Very noticeable. <laughs> so, let's cut all this down for a second. As now we have Sapnap's back, baby, and he's ready to murder some more. So, <laughs> Sapnap and Carl come together, and they and Sapnap makes a plan to hold Henry hostage. Henry the cow is going to be held hostage. However, yes. he accidentally kills him. Yeah. So, this begins the War of the Burning Tower. <laughs> so Tommy is now pissed, and he teams up with Nikki and another name we haven't seen in a while, Scappy, to get revenge. <laughs> They're gonna get revenge. And as Carl was complicit in the murder of Henry... The two decide. To, the three decide to burn down the Eiffel Tower as it was to serve as their honeymoon spot. Now, Dream logs on, and he surprisingly agrees to help Tommy. Now he provides them some lava and water, and they change the plan from simply burning down the tower to encasing it in stone. Now, Bad, Bad Boy Halo, steps in and attempts to convince them to stop, but as he believes the death of a cow is not enough of a good reason for griefing an entire base, but he is unsuccessful. Now, Tommy and Dream attempt to frame Bad for the damage caused by the fire by tricking him into holding a flint and steel and getting a screenshot. However, this angers Skeppy, and both Bad and Skeppy begin to fight Dream and Tommy. So now, oh, whoops, I keep accidentally breaking quartz instead of what I want to break. So, Sapnap logs back on. And Bring it all up. What? What? What'd you say? N nothing. Okay. Alright. So, <laughs> Sapnap logs on, and Tommy abandons the fight with Skeppy and Bad, and he turns his attention on to Sapnap. Now, Sapnap asks who burned down the tower, and Dream Tommy... And Ant Frost, by the way. Ant Frost is here as well. Let me get Ant Frost. Dream Tommy and Ant Frost are all like, oh yeah, it was definitely bad. But Sapnap doesn't believe them. And, <coughs> and begins eating Henry's remains <coughs> to torment Tommy. Okay. Just, uh, man, sometimes things happen on the server, and you have to sit and think yeah. about it for a little bit, and you're like, yeah, that is something I watched, that is something I witnessed. The H. Palmer guy was here at some point, that was kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, Tommy is enraged, and he attacks Sapnap. So Sapnap, Bad, and Skeppy all team up to hunt down Dream, Tommy, and Nikki. Now, Tommy and Dream escape to an ender chest where Nikki is caught and held hostage. So Dream, in a surprising show of handing over leverage, gives Tommy Mars. Mars the fish, one of the oldest fish on the server. And he makes him promise not to hurt Mars, but tells him that he can use it as leverage in the fight. And then he disappears into the shadows. Okay. So Tommy confronts Sapnap and he holds on to Mars' leverage. He leads the group away from where Nikki is being held hostage, and he shows them that he has proof that he has Mars by taking him out of the chest for half a second, and once he grabs Mars, he ender pearls away and tells Nikki to run. 
Now, Nikki was left alone with Aunt Frost at this time, and she negotiates with him, and he decides to comply and let her go. However, he follows her, and she doubts if he really agreed to let her go or if it was a traitor situation. So Tommy tells Nikki to go to Pogtopia, but she doesn't know where Pogtopia is. So he tells Aunt to take her there, which pisses Sapnav off, because Sapnav says, Sapnav says, I thought Aunt was on our side. And Aunt claims, oh, I am on your side. And he hits Nikki with a sword, which panics her. However, Aunt reveals that this was a ploy to trick Sapnav, and he lets her go. And cl when Sapnav asks where she went, he claims that he lost her. So Tommy, Aunt, oh. and Nikki convene outside of Pogtopia, and Bad, Skeppy, and Sapnap catch up to them. And now here, Tommy reveals that Technoblade is joining the fight on his side, as well as Dream. And it's a good thing to mention that Technoblade and Dream are two of the most, the best PvPers in all of Minecraft. Like, that's no joke. Oh, yeah. You know Bed Wars? Technoblade yep. has a 1,000 plus win streak on Bed Wars. Damn. You cannot Damn. kill this man if you try. So, so because of this, Tommy wins. Tommy wins the Battle of the Lake. And everyone agrees to keep the war a secret from Wilbur and Schlatt to avoid any further conflict. So that's like a side war, but I figured I'd mention it. Oh, no. But I figured I'd mention it. Dream SMB has secret war arcs. Yes, they do. Mexican Dream makes his first appearance. What's the, excuse what? me, can you repeat that sentence, <laughs> please? No. Mexican Dream makes his first <sighs> appearance. I'm going to be talking about... So he just, he's just Dream, right? No, it's actually Quackity. <laughs> oh. No, Quackity, Quackity is um, Mexican, I believe. I'm not okay. entirely certain, like, if he's Spanish or Mexican, because I know those two things are different. And I don't know much about Quackity, and I don't want to make an assumption and look like an asshole. But anyway, um... We're going to talk about him later. I just thought it was important to mention that this is where he first shows up. Oh, yeah? He's... Mexican Dream is very interesting. So, now we're going to get into God. So... <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so, Fundy... Here and, not go. I meant to put Tubbo there. Fundy and Tubbo team up to become Dream and Hunters. Now, after building a demon repellent tower, Fundy and Tubbo believe that demons have infiltrated the server, and they believe that Dream is possessed by one. So they go through an okay. elaborate exorcism process in order to attempt to rid Dream of the Dreamin. So Dream dies to TNT during the ritual, and when he comes back, he seems oddly lost and confused. Now, his memory appears to have been wiped. So Fundy and Tubbo lead Dream through the server in an attempt to jog his memory, and they try to lock him behind an iron door. Now, locking him behind that iron door triggers the Dream inside, and he begins to harshly attack the two, which kills them both. But, however, the kill allows them both to respawn, which gives them enough time to formulate a plan before Dream comes back to kill them a second time. So... Fundy believes that the only way to get Dream back to normal, I forgot about this, is to recreate Fundy's marriage proposal. Why are we Fun doing this? Fundy, Fundy proposed to Dream once, and they had a wedding, but it was considered to be non-canon, so I didn't include it in this lecture. I have a question, teacher. Yes? Are we just here to suffer? Yes. All right. All right. You mean in this lecture or like alive in general? <laughs> Either or. I think yes is answers both. Yeah. All right. The answers yes. This world's a, this yes. world's another planet's hell. Got it. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, uh, so Tubbo stalls dream until Fundy can acquire bread. <laughs> which was an essential part of the proposal. And um, when Fundy hands over the bread, Dream levitates into the sky and explodes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever have bread that's just so good? That you just... Damn, this shit bussin' dies. <laughs> <laughs> this shit bussin' freeze a death. 
and when he comes back, he reveals that he no longer feels the presence of the Dreamin. So the Dreamin is gone. And Tubbo and Fundy celebrate. However, <coughs> quick, they quickly realize that while the Dreamin has been separated from Dream, it's not dead. So it comes back as Dream XD. <laughs> what? Dream XD Dream is directed. So he, this was just an evolution stage? Yes. Oh, And Dream okay. XD makes a brief appearance before disappearing. Dream XD becomes the god of this server. Uh, can I that ask a question? Really banger. <laughs> what? So Dream XD is the dreaming. Yes. Okay. That's how he started. Over time, he evolves to become. Why are you up here? <laughs> <laughs> Over time, he evolves. He evolves to become the god of the server. No one. There's really okay. no like. There's really no like state of progression like he disappears as just a demon and then the next time he comes back people are like that's god and we're all just like oh okay yeah <laughs> all right all right what what are his what can he do as god of dream smp he has admin powers did he oh, not have no. that before well he did because he and the dreamin were considered one okay it's I don't know, man. So Dream the character no longer has admin powers. Yes, but now that Dream he's XD possessed. does. Yes. Yeah. Dream XD. But that is Dream, powers. isn't it? Because Dream is now Dream XD. Dream XD and Dream are separate entities. Wait, yeah, but like, wait. Like Sonic and Fleetway Supersonic. Okay, so Dream sure. died, and that just spawned Dream XD into existence. They exercised Dream XD from yeah. Dream. Oh, that's what the bread yeah. was for. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, and is that a canon death or no. not? Okay. That's hardly a canon event, to be completely honest with you. <laughs> anyway, All right. back to the actual storyline. <laughs> Schlatt announces the Manberg Festival. This is to be a festival made to celebrate Manberg and all, the comp and all of the accomplishments of the Schlatt administration. Wilbur, upon hearing about this festival, he begins to question whether or not he's been doing the right thing by going against Schlatt, as he been, he's been been wanting to take him down, but he considers the fact that Schlatt was democratically elected. However, Wilbur says that he believes that Lemanberg's central values have been destroyed. And he says to Tommy, we're in the right, aren't we? And Tommy says, yes, I've... Tommy says, I'm always in the right. And Wilbur says, so let's be the bad guys. So Wilbur fully embraces his position as a villain, and he makes plans to blow up the entirety of Manberg, dooming oh, no. the same fate that Lemanberg suffered in the Lemanberg War. <laughs> now, Tommy is horrified by this plan, and he attempts to talk him out of it, but Wilbur ignores him, and he contacts Dream for supplies. Now, Wilbur sees Dream as a common ally, now that both of their agendas align, and they both wish to destroy what is left of Manberg. And with that, we enter the Manberg Festival. So, let's see. The Schlatz cabinet, which again consists of Bundy, Tubbo, and Quackity, they begin preparations for the festival. Uh, Tubbo okay. is assigned to give a speech. And shortly after this, we meet the goddess of chaos in her first form. <coughs> Drista. Now, Drista is Dream's actual, like, in real life, younger sister. She's 14 years old. We love her. Her name's Drista. And she takes over from Dream's account for a day. And she very quickly discovers her god status due to access to admin powers. And she immediately used those powers to kill Tommy and temporarily <laughs> ban him from the server. Now, because she... that was that a canon death? No. No? Okay. I remember seeing a lot of YouTube clickbait about this. I love Drista. She's the goddess of chaos. She's the best. She's awesome. And so she, in her first visit, she attempts to put herself into creative mode, but Dream intervenes and stops her, thus stopping her powers for the time being. Also... Everyone, put your hands together for the fifth lemon tree. 
Yes. <laughs> Wait, Professor, I have a theory. Yes. I think this lemon tree is going to be destroyed. Give it time, buddy. All right. Is this, okay, is this a real lemon tree or is this like this is a, a real tree one. with gold in it? This is a real okay. one. He's he makes it as an attraction for the festival. <clears throat> okay. So October sixteenth, the day of the festival, Schlatt gives a speech to the attendees before sending them off to a section of Manberg called Party Island, and Tubbo quietly sneaks away to discuss the festival with Tommy and Wilbur. Now, Wilbur is beginning to have second thoughts about blowing up Manberg, as he sees all of his friends happy and having a good time at the festival. He decides to put the decision in Tubbo's hands, and he tells him, if you want me to blow up Manberg, say the phrase, let the festival begin. So, Tubbo heads back to the party, where Schlatt and Quackney both question where he's been, but are distracted by part of the party celebration. And Tommy and Wilbur find chests with their names on them amongst the gifts to the Manberg residents, only to find that theirs have been filled with trash. And Wilbur believes it to be Tubbo's work, and he doubles down and decides to blow up Manberg, regardless of Tubbo's opinion. So, the festival attendees return to the podium for Tubbo's speech, which is beautiful, it's nice and short, but towards the end, Schlatt begins to laugh, and he says, do you have anything else to contribute? And Tubbo says, let the festival begin. And Wilbur immediately goes sprinting for the button. However, he stops because something weird's happening on the stage now. Schlatt and Quackity lock Tubbo in. They encase him in concrete, making it impossible for him to escape. And Schlatt reveals that he's known all along that Tubbo has been a spy for Pogtopia. Oh, God. And he brings yeah. Technoblade up to the podium. <coughs> and he tells Technoblade to kill him. And Technoblade... Technoblade apologizes to Tubbo. He says he, says he doesn't want to do it, but there's peer pressure involved. And he pulls the trigger, killing him and taking Tubbo's second canon life. And this is an event referred to as Tubbo's execution. So, now, Techno, over here, then turns and fires on the crowd in an event that is known as the Manberg Massacre. He kills every single person in that room. Every single person at the festival, he kills them. And, which includes Schlatt, Schlatt, Schlatt is taken out, and that removes a cannon life from Schlatt. And, <laughs> and Wilbur and Tommy emerge from their hiding place. Wilbur attempts to find the button, but in the madness of the executions and everything turning crazy, he cannot find it. And the Manbergians rally in an attempt to hunt Tommy down, as he is in land that he's not supposed to be in. So Tommy is killed by Purple. This is not a cannon death. Purple kills Tommy, and Techno flees the scene, leaving Wilbur behind to frantically search for a flint and steel to blow up the TNT. However, Wait, question. How do we decide what counts as a cannon death or not? They just how is do. that decided? They just do. So, like, there's just a huge uh, massacre going on, and some of these are cannon deaths and others aren't. Yeah. Why? I don't know. For the drama? <laughs> What? Well, okay, so who decides what's canon or not? How the is writers it do. Wilbur. Wilbur's there are writers? Writer. Yeah, Wilbur is... Well, the actors the are the writers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought this was just, like, half improv. Yeah, it is. Uh, but they also, uh, okay. decide what, they also decide what counts as canon deaths and what does not. So they just do it on the fly, like, yeah, that's canon. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. Sorry, I blew my nose. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so Nikki, <laughs> Nikki Sorry. then steps That's up. That's for every nose blow. Nikki yeah, steps up just... to the plate, and she says, and she yells at Schlatt for what he's done to the country and what he's done to Tubbo, and she reveals that she doesn't even want to be in Manberg anymore, and that she too is a spy, and Schlatt then oh tells God. her, "Well, then you can either leave or be executed." <laughs> and upon hearing that, let me see this. So, Nikki's here. Wilbur steps up out of hiding 
and takes all the attention away from Nikki, which allows her to be able to escape. So Techno returns to stand beside Wilbur, and the two attack the remaining crowd to get their, to get out and, and retreat. So Wilbur, Techno, and Nikki are now all back in Pogtopia, as well as Tubbo. Tubbo's here too. Um, so Schlatt and Quackity are pretty much the only two left in the cabinet. Well, Fundy's here too. Fundy's here too. That's not true. So Quackity, and Quackity is beginning to doubt his allegiance to Schlatt after witnessing Tubbo's execution. And now that Tubbo is gone, Schlatt states that they're going to take down the Kamar van, as well as the original White House building, as they are both relics of Lamanberg and not Manberg. So Schlatt wants to do this, but Fundy and Quackity strongly disagree with him, and they attempt to talk him down. Now, over in Pogtopia, Tommy, who is angered by Techno's actions, because, you know, Techno killed his best friend, which is always fun. All now, right. <clears throat> now, he is angry by Techno's actions, and, he's, and he gets into a fight with him. And Wilbur decides, you know what? We're going to end this here and now. And he digs out a pit in Pogtopia, and they call it the Conflict Resolution Pit. And he puts Techno and Tommy inside and says, we're going to duel to figure this out. Now, Nikki and Tubbo are against this idea, but Wilbur taunts Tommy while Techno and Tommy face off in the pit. And this is one of the first instances of really noticing how Wilbur's mental health is spiraling. He's, he's losing his sanity quite a bit. And it okay. becomes very obvious at this point as he's taunting Tommy during this duel. Now, Techno obviously wins the fight, and he and Wilbur begin plotting how best to destroy Manberg, while Tommy, Tubbo, and Nikki return to the surface, and they vow to stick together, and because they wish to hold on to the hope that Lemanberg will one day return. So that's the festival. That's the green festival. No, the red festival, sorry. That's the red festival as it is commonly referred to. Any All questions right. before we move on to the festival aftermath? Can I just try to give an attempted recap? <clears throat> yes. Go for it. So, we have one group that wants to destroy everything that was about Lamanberg to keep it just about Manberg, to yes. really focus on their future. Mm -hmm. And the other group decides that, no, we're going to stick together and protect our legacy. Yes. Except the problem is that group has Tommy in it, and the other group has an insane man on it, Wilbur. <laughs> so, everyone sucks. Well, the insane man is on Tommy's side. The dictator oh. is on the other side. Jay Schlatt. Yeah. Okay. Jay Schlatt. Jay, Jay Schlatt. Schlatt. A.K.A. Also, uh, I'd, I'd, like no, to what? I'd like to point out a fun fandom note, because um, you'll see fan art of this, and you'll probably be like, what the fuck? So, it became a headcanon around this time that Jay Schlatt had devil horns as he was literally the worst person on the server. And it then Yeah, isn't his like rant soda a goat or something too? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> so yeah. it became a widely accepted um headcanon that Schlatt had horns. And it then became a headcanon that as they were involved in Schlatt's administration, the three members of Schlatt's administration, Quackity, Fundy, and Tubbo, Oh, whoops. And where's Tubbo's head? There's Tubbo's head. Tubbo? Tubbo? Here. Yeah. It was, it was um, theorized that they all began growing horns as well. However, okay. this headcanon did not, did not stick with Fundy or Quackity, but it stuck with Tubbo. <laughs> uh, people really liked giving Tubbo horns, and from this headcanon, um, it became uh, a widely accepted headcanon that Tubbo is actually um, a goat hybrid, and now he's been given horns in almost every okay. fanfic you ever see of him. So I just like that fun note of like how fandom evolves from headcanon to headcanon. I mean, this thing is so tied to fandom. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also, this is not canon at all, this is not canon, both have confirmed that this is not canon, but there's a widely accepted headcanon that because Tubbo was the only one for the um, ram for the horn theory to stick. That Schlatt is actually Tubbo's father, but um, that's not canon. That's just a thing. although it's a fun it's a fun theory, 
and I appreciate it. So, and I hate to derail this more, but Schla- was Schlatt responsible for everybody dying at the festival? Um, he was the one who called Technoblade up and told him to execute Talbo. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so technically, he is partially responsible. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> so now we're gonna take a step back and we're gonna go over to Ant Frost, Bad Boy Halo, and Sam. We haven't heard from Sam in a while. We like yeah. Sam. Yeah. Well- by the way, when are we in real life right now? Yeah, what what's the date? Um, this is in October of 2020. Okay. So we are a couple months in at this point. He's uh, I was working at Walmart. These people were fucking starting revolutions in toppling countries. Yep. Yeah, you should have joined them. <laughs> so, Ant Frost, bad and awesome dude. They come together to agree that they don't align with either Manberg or Cryptopia. And so they don't align with either of their ideals, and they create the nation known as the Badlands. So the Oh, tri- are they how good are, are they? They're they're all right. Depends on so who bad you So bad is bad is just a descriptive term, yes, right? Yes. They're the Badlands. Okay. And um, they plan on recruiting other neutral SMP members to the Badlands, and they plan on taking the land between Eret's Castle and Skeppy's Mansion in order to have control of the perimeter surrounding Pogtopia and Manberg, thus trapping them inside. And um, you'll be glad to hear... They appeal to H-Bomb! However... H-Bomb is untrusting of literally everyone on the server, smart man, and chooses to remain neutral. I thought the bad were neutral. <laughs> um, they are, ne- well, they are, they're, they were neutral, and now they're their own faction. So now they're technically a side. So H-Bomb decides to stay completely neutral. And stay. Okay. Home. So, over here, Tommy decides to dis- to travel Tommy decides to go to Manberg with the intent of assassinating <sighs> both Quackity both Schlatt, Schlatt and Quackity. So he wants to assassinate the two in order to get this all over with. However, he finds the two arguing over destroying the original man White White House and he watches from a distance. So Schlatt yells at Quackity to destroy the White House, which he reluctantly begins to do so. But Schlatt, as they're destroying it, continues to berate him and other members of the Manberg as he says they're all... That legitimately scared me. (laughs) I just saw a creeper and I panicked (laughs) for a second. Yeah, because this is a creeper head. Yeah, I I panicked for a second because I was was just... Yeah, anyway. So, so Schlatt's berating everyone in Manberg and he's calling them all idiots. And Quackity decides he's had enough. So he resigns as vice president, effective immediately, and kills Schlatt, taking the second cannon life from Schlatt. So now Schlatt only has one cannon life, and he retreats from Manberg. Now Tommy has witnessed this. So Tommy runs after Quackity, and he and Quackity confesses to wanting to overthrow Schlatt for good. Like, he's killed him, but Schlatt is going to come back. So he wants to overthrow him for good. And Tommy invites him to join Pogtopia, and he accepts. Now, Quackity, Tommy, and Wilbur. Wilbur brings them to the button room. He found the button room again, which is rigged up to all the TNT that is under Manberg. And he which confesses to wanting to press the button, which will blow up the whole nation. And Tommy and Quackity hold him back. Now, the three discuss potential ways of taking down Schlatt instead of using the explosives. One um, suggests one suggestion is a meeting, working through a meeting where they can scam him into giving up his power. Another is a death trap where they can take his final cannon life. And they all agree he'll be exploding the nation. But that is the last ditch effort. These two do not want to do that. Also, over here, uh, we're just going to Pop him in. Um, Eret decides to start building a historical museum. 
He, the, she builds. Yeah. She builds a historic museum where she starts building like replicas of historic builds and historic moments in the Dream of Simpy. Where did? Where did? Why are you guys? Where are you guys going? I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> where are you guys going? <laughs> I just saw Ed leaving and I wanted to join him. <laughs> nice. What happened? All right. right. So, Tommy also reclaims the embassy as his official house and begins cleaning up the area. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to talk about. Does he make another lemon tree? So Ponk begins building Thickatron. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, Thickatron is a giant wooden building that was intended to be the trunk of the biggest lemon tree yet. Yeah. Okay. However, after building after building part of Thickatron, Ponk decides he's going to prank Sam. He goes to Sam's base, and he disguises a dog Sam has a pet dog named Fran, and Ponk gets another dog and names it Fran and replaces the real Fran with the fake Fran. And then okay. he pranks Sam to make him believe that he's kidnapped and killed the real Fran. Now Sam retaliates by blowing up Thickatron. Goodbye, Thickatron. You were great for a period of time. And he decides that's not enough, and he goes and he places TNT along the top of Ponk's fifth lemon tree and threatens to blow it up. Now, H-Bomb steps in and he attempts to stop the conflict, but then Ponk starts taunting him and he gets angry and H-Bomb lights the TNT and destroys the fifth lemon tree. You know, he kind of deserved that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And then Ponk reveals the real Flan, Fran and apologizes for his prank. And Sam forgives him. So that's that. I'm just putting that in there. Because I feel like Ponk deserves some more recognition. Um, so. Now, going back to Wilbur. Quackity. And all that mess. So. Hi. <laughs> allergies you know oh shoot this is my seat i'm willing to let it slide because you have allergies okay <laughs> 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 all right so out of nowhere after all this wilbur decides he's gonna go blow up the nation right now he's gonna go blow it up right nice. now he's tired yeah, he's, done. he's gonna go blow it up right now so quackity carl and nikki all sprint to manberg to stop him and Quackity is ultimately able to convince him to not press the button by telling him that he will arrange the previously discussed meeting with Schlatt. Okay. So Wilbur warns him that if the meeting does not occur by that Friday, he's going to press the button. So, anyway... Oh, I'm over by Tommy. I've had these guys. Anyway, um, in a twist of events that no one ever saw coming, Sapnap uh, kidnaps Tommy's horse <laughs> and decides to hold him for ransom. In order to get Mars the fish back. That just happens. So, nice. also, Puns and Sapnap come together. Let me get Puns here. Puns and Sapnap. That's not Sapnap. <laughs> That's not Puns. Puns and Sapnap, they obtain a pet panda named Dump Truck. Alright. And, and Ant Frost steals Dump Truck. And this sparks the second pet war. Now, the second pet war is not super important to the lore, so I'm just going to shorten this very quickly and let you know that Dump Truck is eventually killed, and this leads to the first real victory that the Badlands gets to have. It's the first, like, war victory that they've had. Anyway. So Quackity decides that he's going to trick Schlatt into transferring all power over to him through the use of a mystery document. So they meet so Quackity meets with Schlatt to get him to sign the document, and Tommy and Wilbur wait in the distance. They watch in the distance with invisibility arrows that Ponk actually supplies him with. Ponk supplies Wilbur with a crossbow and invisibility arrows. And as Schlatt is about to sign the contract, he reveals that he knows about the TNT under Manbrook. And Quackity, Tommy, and Wilbur flee okay. into the forest. And Wilbur shoots Quackity with an arrow of invisibility to help him escape. 
Now, Shalad right. follows the three of them and eventually catches up, but is held by Wilbur at Arrow Point. And Schlatt discovers the truth about the book, and he claims that he has moved all of the TNT to Pogtopia. And he begins to attack Tommy and Quackity, but the two overpower and kill him. So Tommy, Wilbur, and Quackity make their way back to Pogtopia, and they find... Fundy, who is revealing himself as a spy and shows them his spy diary as proof. And also... Bad Boy Halo comes to Pogtopia, and he reveals that, Bat that Pogtopia has the support of the Badlands in the war. All so right. Fu so Fundy claims that Schlatt has now been left with no true allies. And this leads the group to come to the conclusion that blowing up with Manberg, blowing up Manberg would harm only Schlatt and no one else, so they declare it unnecessary. Now, Dream joins in, and Dream says that while he wants dream explains that schlatt has given him a valuable item in exchange for his support he does not say what that item item is but he says it means that he must fight on the side of lamanberg however he says that he doesn't care whether or not it is destroyed and he only craves destruction <laughs> so <laughs> this is unpossessed dream right yep, this is unpossessed dream Dream is no longer yeah, possessed. He's a fascist, remember? He's just an asshole. Well, I thought maybe that was just the demon in him. No, he's just the an asshole. The demon inside is also a fascist. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just the demon in him. No, no, no. He's just an asshole. <laughs> he always has been and always will be. So. <laughs> Look at this green block with one line on the end. Yeah. What is asshole? <laughs> so, Dream also then chooses to reveal that there's a traitor amongst the Pogtopians, but he does not say who it is, and tensions rise amongst the group. And Wilbur warns that while the others have deemed it unnecessary, if they lose the war, he will blow up Manberg and destroy it. So, all of the Pogtopians, which is now, let me, let me see all the people in here, so we need, Mickey. to do okay so all of the pogtopians and their allies uh come together to discuss how to defeat schlatt on the 16th and for some reason i still don't know why dream is there for the meeting and he suggests why don't you just blow it up why don't yeah, you just that's kill it? Yeah, that's been a common suggestion. Yeah, why don't, you just, why don't you just destroy it? And Wilbur, I'm waiting for somebody to finally just press the button. And, yeah, this is like the worst case of who's going to press the button for months, dude. It was insanity. But So Wilbur agrees with the ideas of destruction, but he agrees that he will fight by, Pogto by Pogtopia, and if he doesn't have to destroy the city, he won't. Now, Wilbur also finds a naturally spawning tree within the borders of Manberg that has been there since the very beginning of the server. And they name the tree the Leman Tree. And all agree that as the war goes on, no harm should come to the tree. And as long as the tree is standing, Leman Saying that there's no harm coming to the lemon tree? <laughs> 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 it's the lemon tree, not the lemon, lemon tree. tree. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, why do these captures wait. keep going so long? I don't wait. know. Roland asks. But um, <laughs> so they agree that as long as the tree is standing, Lemanberg will stand alongside of it. Now, Quackity also accuses Tommy of being the traitor, which Tommy refutes by saying, in order to be the traitor, he would have to go against both Tubbo and Wilbur, which he doesn't want to do. Now, Sapnap is over here, and he begins to work on a secret base behind Church Prime. Now, Carl, bring Carl over here. Carl's head is already in my hot bar. Now, it's Carl, legal, right? Because you can't fight in Twitch Prime land. You cannot. You cannot fight in Twitch Prime land. No, you cannot fight in the Holy Land. So, you can Sapnap, build the base. Yes, it's behind Church Prime. It's behind. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, so Sapnap begins to work on the secret base, and Carl finds a cat and names it Rutabaga. And the two put the cat inside of the secret base. And completely unaware of the upcoming war, which is hilarious on a number of levels, how do you completely forget that there's a war coming in, like, two days? Um, <laughs> he, they considered to make their own country called Rutabagaville, after the cat. And they invite Ant Frost, they invite Bad Boy Halo, and they invite Sam. Completely unaware that the bad ba Badlands already <coughs> exists. Now, the Badlands, uh, Bad Relief reveals that the Badlands will only align with Pogtopia for as long as it aids them, as their goal as a nation is to maintain conflict <coughs> on the server at any cost. So their goal is to maintain conflict between Manberg and Pogtopia for as long as it can go on so that they may control everything else outside of the borders while the two countries are so focused on the land that they already have. So Dream supplies both sides of the war with supplies. He gives Wilbur gunpowder for his TNT plot, and he provides Schlatt okay. with netherite gear and a shield emblazoned with Manberg's new war symbol. Now, Carl and Sapnap join Manberg's side as they wish to participate in the war, and as they wish to participate in the war, and Rutabagaville officially becomes a state of La Manberg, so, of Manberg. So Rutabagaville is not its own country, it is a state within the, the country of Manberg. We're never going to talk about... in the SMP. Yes. We're never going to talk about Rutabagaville again. You can completely forget about it. It does nothing after this. Whew, okay. okay. <laughs> so, right before the war, Sapnap and Tommy decide to get over their differences, and they hold the final pet war, where Sapnap decides to hold Horse, which is Tommy's horse, for Ransom to get Mars back. Now, Sapnap returns Horse to Tommy, but Tommy refuses to hand back Mars, which prompts Sapnap to kill Horse. So Sapnap then attacks Tommy, and Tommy runs away as George and Dream join the server, and to Tommy's surprise, Dream sides with him, as he expresses a want to kill Sapnap. So Tommy and Jack Manifold join Dream and George in the fight against Sapnap. And Sapnap is chased to the top of a tower and ends up jumping off, and the fall kills him. And Sapnap and Tommy agree to a duel to officially end the war, which Tommy loses. Again. Tommy is not very good at winning duels on his own. So... Sapnap and Tommy discuss this war, and Tommy agrees to give Mars back to Sapnap so that Sapnap may release him into the ocean, and thus ending all conflict between the two of them. So that's the final pet war. All right. Yep. It's a short little thing, but it was important because it's like the final pet war, so it's a big thing. All right. While this is happening, Jack Manifold establishes Manifold Land. I'm just putting him here for now. He builds his own country named Manifold Land, which encompasses his and Quackity's homes in Manberg. So he does that. Anyway. Manifold Land is within Manberg. Manifold Land is within Manberg, but he claims it is his own separate country. Got it. Okay. Yep. So, anyway. So, November 16th rolls around, and it is the day of the war. And as the war is set to begin, I'm going to put them over here because they were just so far out of everything else. So, remember Callahan? No! <laughs> From the very beginning of the server? Yeah. Oh, was that the other person that helped make it? He and George, while the war is going on, forget that the war is happening and build a house. If, if you're gonna watch any video on the Dream SMP side, um, okay, I'm gonna say this before I start talking about the war. If you're going to watch anything in the Dream SMP, watch the Manberg versus Pogtopian War in its entirety. It is insanity. It's some of the best improv that they've had. It's the best acting. It's some of the best action. It's really, really good. It's a great, it's a great, it's my favorite section of the entire Dream SMP. But also, watch the video where someone intercut what George and Callahan were doing during the war, because it is super hilarious to watch George go, hmm, do we want a barrel or a fence to be there? Intercut with the screams of war. <laughs> it is really, really funny. 
Anyways. <laughs> um, also, Skeppy be officially becomes the fourth member of the Badlands. Good for him. Good job, Skeppy. So, Eret and Dream. Over the factions that are in play and what they're trying to do right now. Yeah, quick recap. Okay, so quick recap of the captions. Of the factions. So there's Pogtopia versus Manberg. This is the big one. Pogtopia is trying to take down the Manberg, the Manberg as the administration is corrupt. The Badlands are helping Pogtopia because they wish to continue conflict on the server. That's pretty much it. Those are the factions that matter right now. Two guys were just building a house. And then there's two guys who are just building a house over the car. Yeah. Building George's Hobbit home. Cut with these screams of war in the background. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to take Dream down. So, now, if you'll remember, Eret is currently the king of the Dream SMP. So, Eret and Dream begin to have a discussion about Eret's power as king and their involvement in the war. Now, Eret wishes to side with Pogtopia, but Dream tells them that by staying out of it, Manberg and Pogtopia will destroy each other, which leaves the Dream SMP able to sweep in and claim everything for themselves again. By the way, Dream also gives a really epic speech there, where he basically threatens um, Eret's kingship, and it's very, very cool and intimidating, and I love that speech. Um, okay, so Nikki... Over here we have Nikki. She shares a secret with Carl, and she explains that she is in the process of building an underground city for refugees of war. And Eret right. informs Nikki, Fundy, and Ponk of Dream's threat to their kingship. And Eret, wishing for redemption, goes to Pogtopia and agrees to help in whatever way he can. Why are there two Erets? Oh, <laughs> I forgot I put him there. Oops. So anyway, er this is where Eret joins Pogtopia. And Purpled! Remember Purpled? We all like Purpled! Purple, my favorite. He joins Manberg's oh, side. Oh, no. <laughs> he joins Manberg's side. And Dream, upon hearing that Eret has now officially gotten involved, um, decides to immediately dethrone her. So, th so, she so Dream dethrones Eret. Eret is no longer king. And Dream places George on the throne instead. So George is now the new king of the Dream SMP. Also, before is the war... Is the king the, the elected president? No, because they're two separate countries. The king is in charge of the Dream... There's... It's a, it'll, it's a little confusing. The, the faction of the Dream SMP is known as the Greater Dream SMP. It's like, as a country within the show, it's called the Greater Dream SMP to show that it's separate from Manberg and all that stuff. So the king is involved, is in control of the Dream SMP, but has no control over Manberg's affairs. Stakes right now in the power dynamics of Dream SMP as opposed to the power dynamics of Manberg? Yes. Pretty much. That's what we're discussing. Yeah. Okay, so also before the war, uh, Tommy boxes in the Lamantry with Obsidian in an effort to protect it. And Wilbur and Tommy meet in Tommy's war room, and Wilbur reveals that he has placed 11 and a half stacks of TNT under Manberg, and plans to detonate them if they appear to be losing. 11 and a half stacks. That is a lot of TNT. So, yeah. So... Wilbur and Tommy come under fire on their travel back to Pogtopia. They're heading back to Pogtopia, and they find Schlatt and, I believe, Carl. Um, yeah, Schlatt and Carl uh, fire arrows down at them, and they manage to escape. And um, Eret officially goes to the Pogtopians again and informs them of their dethroning. Now, while Eret is, is telling them about her dethroning, Puns and Dream, both fighting on the side of Manberg, ambush the Pogtopians, and they manage to kill Quackity and Fundy. And I, honest to God, cannot remember if those are canon deaths for, for Quackity and Fundy. Um, so the Pogtopians regroup in Pogtopia, and Technoblade leads them to the Vault. Now, the Vault is an underground secret base built by Techno that he has been grinding 
levels at. Off, he has been grinding for materials for war supplies for weeks. How many secret bases are there on there's the a server? Lot of, there's a lot of secret bases on the server. Uh, so this is this is as I see as Minecraft. <laughs> it's Minecraft tower. So techno. Like, how can you mine without just running into somebody's secret base? It's Minecraft. You tell it's pretty, it's a pretty Discord big chat. server. Yeah, it is a pretty big server, to be completely honest. So, All right. so yes, Techno brings them to the vault, and it is packed full of goodies. I'm talking enchanted netherite armor for every single person in Pogtopia. I'm talking chests completely full of enchanted crossbows. It is amazing. It is the biggest... It is one of the biggest stashes of war supplies the server has ever seen. So, now suited up, the Pogtopians take to the railway. And the war begins. They take to a big railway that leads straight to Pogtopia. That leads straight to Manberg. So the Pogtopians move in offensively on the eastern tower where Carl and Schlatt are stationed and where they fired arrows down at Wilbur and Tommy earlier. And they take it back and they force the two to pearl away. And now with the high ground, the Pogtopians fire down on the Manbergians and their allies. And the Manbergians are forced to retreat, but the Pogtopians aren't willing to let them. They all jump off the tower and immediately chase after them, and a short battle begins. However, if you look around during this short battle, you notice that Schlatt is missing. Schlatt is not there. And soon enough, Dream calls for surrender. And he says, Schlatt's not here. And if Schlatt is not willing to fight for his own country, then I'm not either. And he calls for surrender. And he leads the Pogtopians to the Kamarvan. And inside the Kamar van, they find Schlatt, who is drinking and smoking and senile and wasted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, short, short side note here, because I love this for Wilbur's character. Um, so Schlatt didn't know that Fundy's character was canonically trans. Like, he actually didn't know, and I feel like that's important to say before I say what happens here. And um, so he did not, he was unaware of this. But... So Wilbur is trying to hold everybody back. He says, we can't kill him yet. We can't kill him yet. And Fundy starts yelling at Schlatt for destroying Manberg, as Fundy wanted to believe in Schlatt and the dream, he says. And Schlatt says, well, I am what you will never be. And Fundy says, well, what is that? And, F and Schlatt says, well, I'm a man. And I tell you, Ooh. and I tell you, the, the speed at which Wilbur goes from we can't kill him to put an arrow in that man's skull is amazing. Wilbur is a bit of a shit father, but he's not a transphobic one, and we Tyler, love to you gotta move around. <laughs> oh, Tyler. Gotta wait a little. little. Tyler. What? What? Hi. Okay, I thought someone was coming up to my door. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I just like mentioning that because I love that I love that for Wilbur's character that he immediately turned and changed his mind the second he thought Fundy was being insulted, which I love. Anyway. Cool moment. So Tommy loads a crossbow and he aims it at Schlatt's head and he's ready to kill him. But then <laughs> I'm not making this up. Schlatt says, does anyone smell toast? And he suffers a stroke, which leads to a heart attack. And he dies. Wait, Schlatt? Schlatt has a heart attack and dies, yes. And that's a canon death. And that is a canon death, and that is his final canon death, which means no! Schlatt is the yeah! first, Schlatt is the first person. Hold up. Schlatt is the this... first person on the SMP to permanently die. Yeah. And the Pogtopians So we can X him out. Yes. And the Pogtopians... we X him out? <laughs> Who wants to X him out? Who wants to do it? Out. Oh, wait, none of you can. You're in adventure mode. <laughs> so Schlatt is now permanently dead. And the Fuck Pogtopians... Fuck Schlatt, gang. Oh, no. Who's, who's, who's with me? Trouble? Fuck Schlatt, gang. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. We're not done. Yeah. We're not done. So the Pogtopians claim victory. And Wilbur names Tommy the president of New Lemanberg. However, Tommy declines this position and he hands it back to Wilbur. Because he says, he has unfinished business with Dream. Dream still has his disc. At least that's what he thinks. Um, Skeppy has him, but it kind of ruins the drama of the moment. So we'll right. just ignore it 
And we're like, oh yeah, Dream, Dream, Dream has the disc. Mm-hmm. Awkward. Was this confusing for the fandom since oh. they didn't have it laid out like this? A little, a little bit, a little bit. But um, anyway, so, so Tommy hands the presidency back to Wilbur. And Wilbur takes the stage and he decrees for the flag to be changed back to the original colors. And then, however, after making this decree, he claims that he cannot take back the position as president as he has lost all faith in governments. <laughs> and, and then hands off the presidency to Tubbo. Tubbo gets to be the president, everybody! Tubbo! Tubbo gets to be the president! Tubbo! Tubbo! <laughs> Kind of, I guess. So bit. Tubbo accepts the role as president, and he makes Tommy his vice president. And the Manbergians, who are once again La Manbergians, begin to take down the remaining festival decorations. And Dream tells the crowd, you know what? There was no Pogtopian traitor. I was just messing with you. They're all like, huh. ha, you rapscallion. And they continue to be ta- taking down the decorations. Oh, Dream. However, <laughs> unbeknownst, to the rest of the crowd, Wilbur has snuck off. I just got rid of Wilbur's head. I can't get that back. Wait, can you just, can you not just like do the middle click on it? No, I can't. It just does a player's head. Shit. Oh no. Uh, No, I misclicked. It was, it was me. So anyway, I don't need his head for a little bit, but while Tyler's getting that. So, Wilbur has gone back to the button room. And Wilbur says, you know, he laments over the loss of Lemanberg, and he claims that the thing that he built the nation for doesn't exist anymore, and it's all over. And he is about to hit the button and destroy Manberg, when suddenly, Phil joins the server. Who? Philza! Uh El- Elza? Philza! Do we know this person? Philza? No, he's brand new. He just joined. He, like, literally just joined. All That's right. what I'm saying. This is his first joining. Okay. Philza joins the server, and Phil logs on, and he appears behind Wilbur in the doorway to the button room and asks him what he's doing, and he attempts to stop him from pushing the button. Now, while this is happening, over here, Techno suddenly assassinates Tubbo. States that he was never... No, this is not a cannon death. Not a cannon death. Not a cannon death. It's fine. Um, a cannon death. It's like a dramatics thing. So Techno suddenly assassinates Tubbo, and he states that he was never on Pogtopia's side. He was simply following his own anarchist ideology and a willingness to destroy the government. <laughs> An anarchist. Good for him. Techno's an anarchist, and all he wanted was to destroy the government. However, now that the Pogtopians have killed Schlatt and replaced him with Tubbo, who is not democratically elected, the Pogtopians are tyrants in their own right. And Techno begins attacking the Lemanbergians, and he sends the scene into chaos. And as this is happening, Dream says, Oh no, there was a Pogtopian traitor. It was Wilbur. (gasps) Oh, you oh dream. <laughs> so, you have Wilbur's head now, right? No, you gave it to yourself, Tyler. You just throw it to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's revived for now. <laughs> that's funny. Um. Anyway, anyway, but that you know why that's funny later. Anyway. Oh, Wilbur, as. Wilbur looks back towards the button. He says, You know what, Phil? Who is it? Are you worried about that? Uh, well, Ezri's just loose now. (laughs) (laughs) No! Are we good? We good? Okay. Wilbur. Wilbur looks back towards the button. He says, There was a saying, Phil. A traitor. It was never meant to be. And he hits the button, oh. and, he, and the manberg explodes. It's insanity. Oh Eleven and God. a half stacks of TNT blocks, <sighs> all at the same time. Seven hundred to thirty-six blocks. I did the math. 
I did it before you did. Oh, oh. Explosions go off left and right. The country is destroyed. Also, one thing about Phil. Phil is known um, on He Goes Hardcore. He's known for being very efficient with an elytra. So in canon, his character has wings. However, due to the fact that due to the fact that the end is cut off and Will cannot obtain an elytra, it has been made canon that in this moment, when Wilbur hits the button, Phil attempts to shield him, and he runs forth and grabs him and shields him, and in, by shielding him, destroys his own wings. Okay, that's cool. So, so there's a canon reason as to why Phil doesn't have wings in this server, and I really like that. Okay. So, Wilbur, who is now exposed to the entirety of Lamanberg as the explosion destroyed the hidden nature of the button room and left him and Phil standing there, he turns to Phil, throws him a sword, and orders Phil to kill him. And Phil is initially distraught by this, and that is when it is revealed that Phil is canonically Wilbur's father. Uh, oh, Phil, okay. it's actually a really intense... He shouts, you're my son, and I won't kill you. And it's like this whole thing. And then, But Wilbur begs him and begs him and begs him, and finally, Phil gives in and kills Wilbur, taking his final canon life, killing him for good. So Wilbur is now dead. So after this... <laughs> One of the most intense and sad moments in the entire Dream SOP, and you're saying, F. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For you. I'm proud. I could do better than that. It's a fish. I'm proud. Good job. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take the L. <laughs> Alright. So after Wilbur is killed by Phil, Techno speaks to Tommy. Everything calms down a little bit, and Techno speaks to Tommy. And he tells Tommy... Tommy is following in the footsteps of Theseus, who is a Greek myth, and it's a story of a man who considered himself to be a hero, but then the people who believed him as a hero like, stand up and end up being his death. I heard about a show. Being his downfall. Yes. Yeah. So, so, now calls him Theseus. Then, he begins placing down soul sand. He says, Do you want to be a hero, Tommy? better die like one. And he spawns several withers oh, that begin shit. completely destroying Lamanberg further. And Respond yeah. The Respond yeah. So oh. He destroys Lamanberg even further and they leave it as a crater. Now the Lamanbergians do team up and destroy the withers but by then it is too late and the destruction has been done. And the Dream and Techno team up to start exploding like little bits of the the city that survived, such as the Kamarvan. They do blow up the Kamarvan. Aww. So, the war ends with the destruction of Lamanberg. And the Badlands declared a victory! <laughs> <laughs> because, because their goal of never-ending conflict has once again been achieved, as now it has shifted from being Lamanberg versus, Manberg versus Pogtopia, to now it is Lamanberg versus Technoblade. So, um... And after this, uh, um, okay, yeah, let me get him. He's, he's good. He tries. We love him. After this, um, Connor joins the server. After the war, he just pops in like, hey, what's up? Connor, I just missed everything. Oh. He has and a cookie monster head. It's actually Sonic. Oh. Yo! 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, hey, hey, hey. Hey. Uh, <laughs> The dream allows Eret to continue living in the castle freely, even though ownership has officially- Hey, no fighting! Even though ownership has officially transferred to George, and in exchange for the Badlands recognizing George as the true king of the server, Dream grants them official land ownership, recognizes them as a country. Alright. Moving up. Thus long. ends Manberg versus Pogtopia War. Permission! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Was that the third part?